guys and girls what's going on viridia here with down the scope episode 34 right 34 34? oh my god 34 (laughs) and where the hell were you last week (laughs) well we we won't discuss that because i was doing some some crazy shit indeed that's what i hear yeah Yeah, it was some some yeah never mind anyway but (laughs) i'm glad you're back back in action i'm back here today and that's all that matters right indeed uh, we don't have to. We don't have to fill it in with the uh, with, with the uh, the head of TGN this week. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> I had to give George a shout out because I know he listens to these. Um, awesome. Anyway, guys, this is uh, Down the Scope, the gaming podcast you can't miss. Episode thirty four. Thirty four freaking weeks of this crap. Getting together, talking to you guys, having a good time. Indeed. And we are just loving it uh, as always. We got. Jason or Anakin, our co-host. Uh, I know everybody made fun of me last week because now they know my real name. Isn't that weird? <laughs> no, no. I don't think anybody knew your name until then. And I know. Uh, I think they actually thought I was named Anakin at birth. <laughs> no, no, no. I know. I know. I have friends when I when I talk about you in real life, they're like, "So is his name really Anakin? Did his mom really go that far?" And I was, oh, no. Oh, nice. It's. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so uh, so what you've been up to, man, this week? I mean, it's it's been crazy. There's actually been quite a few new games, AAA titles come out. We can't use the excuse that there's nothing out. That's true. You know, um, you know this uh, this week we can actually finally talk about some of these big name games. Uh, Resistance Three uh, finally made it out. Dead Island is still controversial out there, especially on the PC with all the problems it's had. Uh, you know, Gears of War Three is on the horizon. Everybody's talking about it. So yeah. Um, uh, lots of fun stuff that we can go over, and, and of course your yeah. your little discussion. Finally, you get to talk yeah. about Deus Ex. Right, I, I'm doing your job for you because you were supposed to have played more, <laughs> and you failed, uh, and so I'm going to be picking up the slack on this one. Uh, <laughs> awesome. But before we get into that discussion, uh, we do have some special guests today. Um, first of all, we have uh, Rui. Uh, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing fine. Um, Rurikon here reporting in for duty for another episode of Down the Scope. He heard the call of duty. <laughs> call of duty. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, you know, I, I, this is literally the first time I've ever talked to you before. Um, and I have no idea what, what, what's up. What do you do? What do you, what do you play? Uh, I play just about anything. I mean, I used to be really, really big into World of Warcraft, but right Checkers, now... Checkers, shoots and ladders. Um. <laughs> no, not that kind of stuff. But I used to be really into World of Warcraft, but now I've kind of expanded my horizons. Um, the ones the ones that I'm definitely going to be playing more right now are going to be RPGs, because I'm really going to be focusing on Dark Souls. When that comes out, I've already mentioned that in the previous oh, episode. You, you just made whoa, a friend whoa, whoa, wait, in Viridia. Wait, wait, you just minute, made a friend. <laughs> Yeah, so we uh, we actually do share something in common. I was you know I was, I was kind of worried about. I was like you know he plays MMOs, he plays these, but then you brought up Dark Souls, and I'm like there there we go. I think now I we just got saw hearts com- fly off the call. There's little hearts <laughs> coming off. <laughs> Demon Souls, Demon Souls is literally next to Oblivion, my favorite game ever. So I'm glad that we we do share that. Um, uh, finally, hang, hang on, knows. I'm gonna take some Advil or something over here. Yeah, All the Demon Souls talk. Here, James. <laughs> No, just get the hell out of here, and then let me, me and me and Rui talk about this. Um, we, so, um, literally, nobody knows what the hell this game is, and then finally, you come in here, and you, we, we can actually talk about it. So, I think in the future, we're just going to have a, a an hour and a half long discussion about Dark Souls. Somehow, and- Anakin's going to be put on mandatory vacation when we see this coming. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, Anakin's tied up in the closet. So, I mean, he's on vacation this week, so we're going to talk I've about actually, the Demon's. I've actually pre-ordered it last week. Yeah, I too. just pre-ordered Dark Souls, the limited edition that comes with the artsy book and all that stuff. And um, the other game that I'm going to be focusing on a lot is probably going to be Guild Wars 2. Those are the kind of the two main games I'm really looking forward to. But since um, Anakin and also someone else from the, the network who's not here today, Chris Voltz, is, is also they're also really into Battlefield, I'm also considering buying Battlefield 3. The get best into that decision shooter. you've ever made. And shoot some people across the face. It's always good, too. <laughs> nice. Well, let's hope you get that good. Um, anyway, so we also have another guest. Uh, th- again, I've never met you before, and I'm glad to have you on the podcast. Uh, your name is, his name is Hengast, right? Am I pronoun- <laughs> Hengast. <laughs> yes. Kind of like, kind of like Zeitgeist, yeah? <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. Hengast yeah. more is Anglo-Saxon, but whatever. Yeah, thanks <laughs> for having me, guys. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. 
What, well, what kind of gamer are you, man? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. I mean, I grew up with console games. Got transferred over into the PC gaming scene a little bit later than most people. Uh, but I basically started my online personality through WoW, a lot like Ruri. In fact, Ruri Khan and I, uh, we, we play a lot of the same games. and we, for, for me, it's more about finding a game that is actually a, a, a good medium for me to communicate with my audience. I mean, I, I'm a, I like to make gaming videos, and that's just what I like to do. I like to play games that allow me to experiment with different things. And for the most part, that is RPGs and things of that nature. But like I said, I play pretty much everything as well. Are you, a fan, of of Final, trades, huh? are, are you a fan of Final Fantasy? No. Oh, <laughs> damn. Hang on. We're losing you. We're losing you. Yeah, we're going to have to knock his ass out of the call. What about you, Rui? <laughs> no, I, I played uh, Final Fantasy VIII. I think I was close to finishing it, but I, but I never did finish it, unfortunately. Jesus. Yeah, but that, is, that is sad. Um, <laughs> I was very young. I was very young, though, so... <laughs> Jesus. Well, Will, uh, I've made a friend in Rui, and I've made it in Will, so... <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, hang on, hang on. Will, come on. You, you, surely there's some other games. How, how do you feel about Kingdom Hearts? Oh, my God. I got what? that for Christmas, the day it came out, or the, the year it came out, <laughs> and uh, let's just say I played about 30 minutes of it. <laughs> oh, damn. Brody, okay. I'm, I'm trying to help you here. <laughs> Will, that was the wrong answer. You were supposed to say Kingdom Hearts is your favorite game ever. What are you My apologies. Hearts? I'm more of a Knights of the Old Republic kind of guy if we're going to talk about RPGs. Awesome. Okay, well... I'm just trying to help Rudy out here. <laughs> no, don't worry about me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a Kingdom Hearts fan either, okay? But, you know, I'm I'll just naming what, all Rudy's favorite I'll, games. I'll tell you what, I'm more of a Final Fantasy fan. I, I enjoy Kingdom Hearts, but uh, they kind of screwed us over with the, the third installment. That's more Reed. Reed is a huge fan yeah, of Kingdom Yeah, true. And he's not with us anymore. Just out, just out of curiosity, with uh, all this Final Fantasy talk, do you know Resonance of Fate, Viridia? Resonance of Fate, the the the, the sound, the mu the music. No, 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 the game. Um, he asked me this last night. I didn't know the answer either. I, yeah, I don't, I don't, don't think so. It's the Jeopardy one thousand dollar question, apparently. I, you know, I, I I've heard of the game. I, I'm pretty sure I've heard of it. I just think um, think Final Fantasy, but with guns and crazy acrobatics. Oh, Resonance for PS3, right? Yep. Yeah, so I, I've actually been looking at that. I don't know. I, you know, I've heard that it's like one of those that you have to invest like all of your time into it in order to actually conquer it. Like, I mean, it's like literally complex and insanely difficult. Is am I right? I wouldn't say that. I mean, I haven't felt it anyways. I'm probably like four hours in or something. I haven't oh. really felt. It just takes you like probably one hour of reading tutorials and trying stuff out to that's understand the game about. mechanics. That's what yeah. I was talking about. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty uh, outrageous for for just a you know somebody who who has a child. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> I was trying one hour. One hour is outrageous. <laughs> one, one hour of reading a tutorial for a video game. Uh, I don't know. You know, I probably would do it for 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 Dark Souls. So I, I can't say it's too bad. But uh, I mean, honestly, is it is it worth getting? Um, I don't know. I mean, I I really liked it. So I don't know. It depends on whether you like this kind of stuff or not. It's basically a mix between the. Um, uh, what's it called? The turn-based combat system of Final Fantasy, but instead of having all your enemies lining up in front of you perfectly, like, okay, here's five dudes on this side, they're the bad guys, here's five dudes on this side, they're the good guys. No, you actually, like, you have tactical positioning, and you right. actually have to move your characters around the map to get more range to do, perform the acrobatics and shoot while you're performing these acrobatics. And it has a little bit of real-time combat to it because you charge your weapons and then according to the number of charges, you, your, your shots will hit harder. Right. So it's a little bit more complex than the Final Fantasy, you know, just turn-based, use item, use magic, something like that. But I really think it's a really cool system. Right, I so it's it's kind. Of, yeah, well, I, it's I got kind it for of, like um, twenty bucks or something. So that's yes, that's not bad. I it's so it's kind of got like a Star Ocean slash Final Fantasy feel to it. So I like, got the the real time and it's got the turn base. Sounds pretty neat. I uh, I'm just going based off you know, and I've done this before. I based my decision on buying a game off of something I've heard other people say, and it's come back and just pissed me off that people would say that like the game near <laughs> uh, and we've talked we talked about this in detail but Indeed. so so i definitely will be picking that up now that i've got your recommendation on it and uh i'll be coming at you if it sucks um anyway 
Jesus. <laughs> anyway, we we like like we talked about earlier. We do have quite a few games that have come out and that are about to come out. And like uh, we we talked about, I think it was two weeks ago. Uh, Deus Ex was brand new at that point, and Anakin had played two two hours into it, something like that. And he gave like kind of a kind of an overview of his first two hours. <clears throat> Um, over the past week, I've actually beaten the game, and um, I'm here to say that I, I, I honestly was not very impressed. I was actually kind of let down by the the hype. Um, it got nines and all that, and I breezed through the game. It, the, you know, the recommended time was probably about twenty. They said about twenty hours, and I breezed through it in like probably eleven. Um, and I didn't even fire my weapon very much. I, I did the stealth based stuff, but it was just. It was just easy. So wait, wait, wait. You made you did make it through using the non-lethal approach. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I I didn't I didn't say that I didn't kill anybody, but <laughs> I did stealth my way through about eighty-five percent of the game. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, so what you're saying is that you're actually a coward, basically. It's like, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to fight anyone. I'm just going to go ahead and slowly go around corners. Oh, and I fought him. I just kicked him in the taint on the way in, uh, up the back. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, so kids. So Close so your ears. Do not ask saying. your parents what that word means. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, what you're saying is you're cheap. Then, <laughs> I, you know, here's the thing, Rui. The, the to, to fight in the stealth in a stealth environment is actually a lot harder than actually running in guns blazing. Because I mean, in that game, you can actually spec yourself to be just to make the game like a first person shooter. You can say, okay, well, I'm just going to have no recoil on my gun. I'm going to do double damage. I'm going to have my arm shoot lasers out of it as soon as I walk into a room, killing pretty much everybody you know, instantly. Or you can explore the game and say, okay, I'm in a room. There's like 20 guys in there. How do I get around them without being seen? And then you kind of explore. Oh, wow, there's a box here I can move and go up this vent. But it ended up being just the story wasn't something to draw you in. Like you got an um, amazing game like Mass Effect, and this, sto- this game has a, a story that will draw you in. It's got the history uh, of the land. You know, you've got all this history you can can go on and you can explore the planets you can read about them and whatnot and this game just felt like it was lacking all that i mean it you you, you were pretty much you pretty much had three locations that you could visit you had detroit uh you had a uh, hangsha china and then you had a skyscraper in canada and basically that was your your hub and you did all your missions in there and it just felt it just felt not fleshed out. The story it more felt like you were on a side quest to a a, a, a main storyline that you never got to. So I was pretty upset Whoa. about that. <laughs> well, damn that. That that's pretty harsh. That's what it felt like to <laughs> the me. The whole yeah, game I, is one long side mission. <laughs> that's what it felt like. Yeah, it, it honestly to me felt like the whole time I'm I'm just I'm I'm waiting for that big punch. I mean, if you played Mass Effect, you know, if you played. The, the second one, you know, you, you're, you're working your way up to going through the Omega Relay. You have no idea how you're going to get out. No huh? spoilers. I haven't played Mass Effect 2 yet. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, yeah, yeah, we actually talked about that. You know, I, I haven't finished it either. Well, this isn't, I mean, this isn't something that, that you're going to be spoiled by. This is like in the very beginning of the game. So, um in any case, that's your, the main point of the whole game is to go get into this thing because you don't know what's going to happen on the other side. And that's what you're working for. You know, you're working toward this. And in this game, it really doesn't feel like you're working toward much. So uh, that's just the way I felt about it. I, th- I think if I had to give it a rating, I'd probably give it, a, I'd say, an 8. I wouldn't have given it a 9. I mean, it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, you could upgrade your stuff, and it was, it had those RPG elements, but just didn't feel right for me. Uh, and a lot of this, a lot of the stuff we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago, Jason, where it was it was you know, we the the stealth aspect of the game just felt uh, fake. You know, you got these guys, and you know that what they're gonna feel. You know, they're they're gonna walk this way, and then they're gonna walk that way. You're memorizing positions rather than actually seeing people, exactly. you know, do things that that nor- they normally would do, like going out and smoking a cigarette or talking on a cell phone. And uh, you know, it, there's even a power that allows you to see how much time you have remaining on your alert so you can literally count down the seconds to their until they're going to go back to being an idiot again you know it's pretty much what it is you know that that don't don't, don't even get me on this topic it. you know I, I was talking about this topic with some uh, some friends of mine at lunch at work the other day about how 
you know, the reason that Dead Space was such an amazing game is because you were immersed in the game. You were in the game. Because get this, there was no UI. There was no floating things on the on the main screen, you know, because you're, you know, you're th everything that you needed to know about the game was actually like part of the world. You know, your your actual interface was a you know, right. floating hologram in front of your character. You right. know, your health bar was built into the suit of the character. It made perfect sense. There were no bars and charts and graphs and all this garbage on the screen to make you feel like you're playing a video game. And to me, that's why, you know, th there's certain games out there that just really nail it. And Dead Space was one that it transcended games and in, into more like an interactive movie. It was a great, great example mm -hmm. of what I want out of like story-driven uh, games, regardless of what, what format or genre they're in. Right. Just give me a damn good story that does not break the fourth wall, meaning... You know, uh, coins pop up when I kill somebody, or you know, what, you know, what, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> just you know, just make you know, just bring me into the environment. You know, immerse me. That's what I'm looking for in a game. Yeah. And Deus yeah, Ex didn't played. do that for me. So yeah, you played it, many Super Mario shooters lately. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you laugh, but think about this. Even in Call of Duty, when you shoot somebody in Call of Duty, money flies out for crying out loud, you know? <laughs> it's, like, wait, it's like, wait a minute. I would go shooting everybody in my neighborhood if money, if money just flew out of them. Every time I would shoot somebody, if they respawned and money flew out, I would go around <laughs> shooting everybody all the time. I think we all would. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shoot them in the legs. Make sure you take as much advantage of it as possible. <laughs> Right. I'm shooting a guy and quarters are coming out. I never got that. Why is that? The, is that for payback? I guess. Exactly. When the, when yeah. The cash it, flies out. Okay. That's right. It's payback. Yeah. And obviously, okay. in free for all, I get a lot of payback. So it seems like you know, four out of five people I shoot in Call of Duty have money fly out. <laughs> Jesus. You know, it reminds yeah. me of the Family Guy episode where, you know, the, the Peter's old uh, physics teacher or science teacher or whatever, you know, he's <laughs> yeah. like, they're going to, you know, we're going to dissect a clown today. His, <laughs> oh, this clown died because his lungs were filled with candy. <laughs> candy. <laughs> God. Anyway, sorry. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's the way I felt about Deus Ex. If you guys have a different opinion, please feel free to call me an idiot and post it in the comments. They will. Or send us. <laughs> or send us a message at podcastdownthescope at gmail dot com and I'll uh, I'll respond to you. Well, hang on, uh, guess. Did you not? Did you not do the Deus Ex thing? Were you not interested at all? Uh, I didn't purchase it. Reason being, mostly, is that in order for me to justify a price tag, I would probably get it on console just because of the nature of shooters. Uh, I, I need to have multiplayer be a contributing factor, and if it's not, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't really grow up with the game. I, I'm not really immersed into the story the way a lot of the fans of the series are, and I, it just didn't justify the price tag for me. I mean, I would like to have seen a nice multiplayer aspect, but because there isn't one, it just I didn't feel it. So well, no, I haven't played it. And to the to the credit of the game, it's not really a first person shooter. It's way more of an RPG. I mean, honestly, I barely even shot a gun in the game. I, you know, you can go through it any way you want. Um, I uh, any gun that I had was a stun or a tranquilizer gun. Um, it's true. So I do understand. I do understand the, the multiplayer aspect, but this is more of a game like Mass Effect or, or uh, I guess even. In, in some ways, like Knights of the Old Republic, it's it's more of a an upgrade. You know, you find weapons, you sell weapons, you get money to augment yourself. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, 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 multiplayer I don't think would have been justified here. But well, the price I mean, tag, I understand what you're saying, and the only reason I bought it was because I got it on sale for thirty dollars. So I do know where you're coming from. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, just a quick comparison, really quick. I mean, the, the type of gameplay style in Deus Ex is very it's unique, it's great. But does it remind you of anything else? For me. It reminds me of Metal Gear Solid almost. I mean, you have the option of approaching combat in a stealth-oriented way or a very action-driven Master, Master Chief kind of way. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But uh, I mean, I really, I really did enjoy the multiplayer <laughs> component to Metal Gear Solid. I mean, the fourth one, obviously, the latest one, because you had that option. I mean, that, it would have been a great opportunity for the developers well, to yeah. just put more time into it and and give it a multiplayer component. Well, yeah, I, think, I, I, I could see how it would work. Well, I see how it could work, but but in Metal Gear Solid, I mean, you weren't. It didn't have that heavy RPG element where you're upgrading and and you're augmenting yourself. I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't as RPG oriented. But I do see how they could add. I mean, it would be cool if they had they had classes like they did in Call of Duty and. 
you could pick a, a heavy class or something like that, and then they would, you know, have preset augmentations to your guy. That would be pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the shooting was even good enough that you know it could have justified. The only bad thing is I don't like, I don't like how the the aim down sights and stuff was. It wasn't. It w- it had some weird controls, as Anakin said before. Yeah. Um, the the controls were definitely a little awkward, but uh, but yeah. So I mean try it out i mean it's not a horrible game it's not bad by any means it just wasn't something that i thought deserved all the rave that it did um i agree you know i I think it was just a little oversold uh in a lot of the reviews and sadly you know i i just think it's a product of the time of release a game like that that i feel is mediocre to good it's not terrible i'm not going to say it's bad at all okay i mean it's very polished it's it's uh, it's different i'm you know i've said this a hundred times in the podcast, I'm always about games that innovate and do things differently and are not just run of the mill. And obviously Deus Ex is different. Mm -hmm. But that game released in November would have been completely overshadowed and I guarantee you nobody would would even have given it two thoughts. And then if it had been released uh, earlier in the spring during all those major games, Dead Space 2, Portal 2, uh, you know, know, a lot of the other things coming out that were all the AAA titles, again, I think it would have been buried and overshadowed and generally speaking, it wouldn't have been on anybody's radar. So uh, I really think that a lot of the hype that this game got was a product of the time of release and really, that's kudos to the distributor for this. I mean, they, they chose a great time to release what would have been a mediocre game uh, during a time when there's not any competition and mm-hmm. it, it really shined you know so uh, I, I think for them it was one of the best ideas that uh, that they could have done with a game like this it's a good yeah, point i do agree um just um just one thing just out of curiosity because i i haven't actually purchased the game either i'm just curious as to whether it, it is possible because i noticed that in the footage of the game the guy has all these cool blades coming out of his arms and stuff like that is it possible to actually go through the game being like a ninja stealth melee type guy yeah, I never. I actually never used the blade one time. You can, uh, you you literally have the option to kill or knock out, and it, it, you know if you, it, you 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 don't have to kill anybody in the game. You can get through the whole game without hurting anybody except for the people that it's necessary for to move the story on. Obviously, here's the um, thing though: if you didn't kill anybody, do these people ever get back up, or are they just basically yeah. it's the same thing as them dying in the game world, but they just no. you know they're not instead of dead, you just don't have a lethal no, they, you know, mark they against can, you. They can be woken up if you don't kill them like if if basically if you're if you don't hide the body after you've knocked them out then their guys will come over and not only will it put them in a hostile state but they'll wake them up and then you'll have one more guy pissed off at you so they uh, do like if you knock them out if you're still in the same zone for a while there's a, b- a very big possibility that you could be you know i mean you could be in a major bad way uh-huh. if you've got a bunch of guys that you've gone through and knocked out and they're all woken yeah. back up by another guy or something and now they're yeah. all coming after you yeah, because you want to you want to plan everything before you do it. So I mean, you get into the room and and again, like you're buying augmentations to help out your style of play rather than, you know, like so so if you're going to go through the game wanting to shoot people, you're not going to be buying, you know, the stealth or hacking augmentations that are going to allow you to get places that you don't want to get. You know, like if you're going to be hacking doors, then that means that you're going to need to be stealthing your way through, and you know the the augmentation points you're wasting. On the hacking, you could be using to make yourself stronger, be able to run faster, or run without any footstep falling noises. Um, so yeah, I mean, you really have to gauge what you're going to do. So if you're going stealth, the, your main prospect is to not even hurt anybody. You gotcha. want to get to the room without even tranquilizing anybody uh, at all. And if you do, you want to be able to grab a hold of them and carry them across the room because you get a massive amount of experience points for actually getting through a room without ever being seen. Um, well, you know, just the idea alone that you can knock somebody out in this game and they wake back up, and, and obviously their AI you know, somewhat changes based on that. I, I have a whole new respect for the game, just knowing that, because I was going through with the brute force method. You know me. I mean, God, I, yeah. you know, they, everybody calls me like a Slayer class anyway in Call of Duty. I've never really been subtle with my gameplay. So right. the idea of going through and playing it that way, actually, uh, that may be for, uh, you know, that may make for a pretty good experience. I may even go back and restart it and go with the non-lethal approach. Yeah, it's, I'm I mean, it's, it's again. tons of fun. It's tons of fun to do. It's just, you know, honestly, like, Fifty percent of an experience in a in a game to me is the story. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Some pe- some people they can go on. Oh well, I just like to kill shit. Well, me, I have to be drawn into the game and the story. And this game just didn't do it for me, man. It just did not pull me in as well as I I thought it should have. Um, 
so yeah, uh, pick right. it up and, and tell me. I mean, there's a ton of people that have told me that the story was what got them into it. I just didn't see it. Um, anyway, just just tell me what you think in the comments and and, and at, on the at the email address I gave you. Um, moving on to an, a game that came out that I haven't yet played. I don't think any of us have, but um, it's Resistance 3, um, and it's gotten some decent reviews. Um, from what I've seen, it's in the high of the high eights. Am I right on Metacritic? That's right. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting pretty good reviews. They're calling it certainly the best in the series. There's no doubt. But I've really never been a fan. I tried the second one. I, I literally played it for. <laughs> I, I told you guys this before the cast. You know, I, I literally played this one for about five minutes. And I was like, eh, I'm out. <laughs> uh, I tossed the disc and I moved on with my day. So um, you know, uh, to that one, you know, I, I think apparently the second one was a very poor choice to get started with. Uh, but Rui, I think you had some comments on that one. You actually played the first the, the second one without playing the first one. Is that right? And you liked it. Yeah. I pl- I didn't say I like it. Um, basically, I- <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I I did play the second one. It's just that basically, it's a shooter, right? And it was one of the first shooters I played on the PlayStation Three because I only got my PlayStation Three last year. And um, I played. I bought the the game, and it was actually in second hand. Basically, it was dirt cheap, so it was the main reason for me to buy it. And a friend of mine said, "Oh, it has co op multiplayer. Get it? We'll be we'll have lots of fun." Never played the game with him. <laughs> I played the game with him. So you know, I like, swear to you, you I did exactly really the same careful. thing. <laughs> you gotta be really careful when your friends are all like, "Oh, it has co-op multiplayer. Bye, we'll play together. It'll be so much fun." Oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. and then it never really happens. But anyways, I bought the game, and one day I was like, "Okay." I want to get a new game or something. Then I was like, well, I never really did touch that one. So I started playing it, and I basically kind of forced myself to go through the game. So in case you guys don't know the story of the game, basically there's an alien race in the future invading our world. They're called the Chimera, and they transform us into aliens. It's same old, same old District 9, the game. Well, it's not. (laughs) It's not same old, same old. All right, well, hey, Will, tell us about about it. You you actually do like the the franchise. I do, yeah. Tell us about it. I remember the PS3 launch with this game, Resistance the Original, and it was really the that was the title that was going to sell the system, and obviously it didn't do its job. Wait, 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 wait! But, hang on, this was their flagship launch game. Oh, absolutely! I yeah, didn't I even know that. Gear, I thought Metal Gear Four was. No, oh, that was later, right? No, did it no, come no. later? It was, it was Resistance the Original. It, that was the title that people were buying in that holiday season for the PlayStation Three because it was new. It looked interesting, and I'll tell you why. If you think about it, what are the kinds of shooters that are really popular? I mean, it's it's obvious. It's like World War II army-based genre games in the history. You know, the Call of Duty series, Metal Gear Honor series, all got very popular because of the World War II setting. The other genre is aliens. Things like uh, Halo, for instance. Right, right. Resistance... What Resistance successfully did, whether or not you actually appreciate the story, but it successfully meshed those two settings, those two genres, into one. You have a a, a 1940s, 50s settings in the United States, in in Europe, elsewhere, but with an alien invasion. And I thought that that theme worked out really well for the game. So, So wait a minute, this is alternate history then? It is, yeah. yeah. I, well, I see, you know, I didn't catch that from the second one. I'm telling no, you. No, yeah, yeah, I don't here's think the, the thing. second one is like the first one, though. I think the second one is in, in the future because, like, the gu- those guns, I'm sorry, those guns weren't here in 1940, that's for damn sure. <laughs> well, the, that's, that's, that's what I was going to say. I mean, a lot of the, even the first game, a lot of the weaponry is not, uh, you can say, yeah, it is back in that time, but it doesn't even look or resemble it to me. Mm-hmm. You know the yeah. first game. The first game did give off that presence of of 1940s. You had the the old paper, you know, that went on the screen when they were telling the story, and and the old the old uh, British lady, she was, you know, telling telling everything, and it did it did have that feel to it. But they dropped it. I mean, they dropped it with the the, the second one, and it was if that it was taking place in the 40s, we uh, you know we, we we came ahead of ourselves pretty quickly in that alternate universe because well, those those buildings were pretty futuristic. I mean, yeah. Bertie, you, you said that you like, you know, 50% of a game experience is the story for you. I mean, mm. the actual story from Resistance was that after World War II, the mm. Russians, the Soviet Union, were developing nuclear warheads just as Germany and the U.S. were, and their experiments went terribly wrong, and mm. it gave birth to some infectious disease that, uh, I don't know if it was an invasion that introduced the alien disease, but whatever nuclear testing they were doing accelerated that process. Mm. And so it, 
the story was that it modified human history. So those weapons would have thereby been justified to look different and all their technologies integrated mm -hmm. into the weaponry of the game. Um, I mean, my opinion on Resistance 3, I, I have, I mean, the original gameplay from Resistance 1 and 2 is good. It's, it's high speed, high octane, action-based shooting. It's, it works well. There's really not any flaws in the gameplay. There's a high uh, skill cap, let's just say, a lot of room for people mm -hmm. to show their differentials and in, in their skill capabilities. Resistance 3 looks amazing. I mean, if you've seen the beta footage, I mean, I haven't played it, I haven't bought it yet, but the beta footage really looks nice. The environments, um, just, just the blending. I mean, PlayStation 3, is, at this point in its lifespan, is really starting to show its hardware superiority in their exclusive titles. I mean, Resistance 3 shows uh, areas of its visual presentation that are far superior to other competitors on the market, coming from the Xbox 360. I mean, it looks like a PC title almost. It looks really nice. So I'm interested to try it out. I might even buy it at full price. Um, now, that's that, the, the Resistance 3 also, that, you know, one of the things that I read about was that they're really pushing that new Insomniac engine, and this is like the new version of that, right? Mm -hmm. It looks really nice. Well, they were, you I've, know, um, Go ahead, Rudy. Go, go, okay, I was, I was just going to say that I've already played it, and I can say that it looks really, really good. Wait, wait, wait. You played it? You played the beta? Yeah, friend. No, no, not the beta. The game is out in, in Oh, that's Portugal. right. That's right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, so you, you did play it. It came out, uh, I think it was Tuesday this week, or was it last week? <laughs> I think it was actually like two weeks ago or something, because I played it at my friend's house. He bought the game like at mm -hmm. least two weeks ago. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I was, um, you know, I think it was last Tuesday. Uh, so yeah, basically so a little. So did more this game actually came out weeks. in Europe before it came out in the U.S.? Is that what you're telling me? Um, no, it's I don't think so. I think it. Uh, uh, I think the the because I was, was about September to September sixth. It was. <laughs> Yeah, it was, no, released in, it was released in the U.S. September 6th. Yeah, the, the release date was... I was about to basically say, in your face! <laughs> That's right! But that was yeah, last Tuesday, not not the Tuesday that just passed. You know, the, the podcast comes out on Sunday. It wasn't his last Tuesday, it was the one before last. So we are going on two weeks. But uh, I was actually just uh, late a week. So, yeah, I, I actually, um, uh, I forgot that it made it out. But what I'm wondering then, based on it even being out... Where the heck is all the, the fanfare about it? I, I didn't see a whole lot of marketing about it. Mm -mm. It's a good point. Uh, there's, there's been a lot of marketing, at least leading up to the, 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 the um, release date. There's been a whole lot of marketing with, you know, the whole T-shirt thing with the skull with three heads or four. Or the with four, four eyes, four, right? Yeah. That thing. And um, there, there's been a lot of marketing that I've seen, at least online, on websites and stuff like that. I've seen a lot of it. M maybe but I was resisting it. <laughs> what a dumbass! <laughs> so basically, here's my here's my main gripe. It's like I'm not big on the whole post-apocalyptic setting. So I guess so. You're out on rage <laughs> coming up, right? <laughs> that's different because rage looks ridiculous. It looks ridiculously good. Uh, I don't know, but I'm I'm not really big into that doomsday scenario that you get into. Um, into Resistance 3, but basically I played it, and one of the things that I really loved for starters is that it's one of those shooters that you can play the campaign with someone else, split screen. So you're into the co-op aspect. I'm totally into the co-op aspect. It was like, my friend was like, oh, dude, you gotta try this out, you gotta try it out, you're gonna love it. So I start playing it in single player, and I'm like, yeah, it's a shooter. I go around and I shoot some stuff. You get the crazy types of weapons that you usually get in Resistance. You have that Magnum, which you shoot, and then you can click the, um, I think it's R2 to make the bullets explode and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, yeah. you know, you, that's something you guys haven't brought up, is one of the, is the main draw of the, the damn game is the weapons. Yeah. Um, this, was made by, this was made by Insomniac, the same guys who made Ratchet and Clank, and, you know, Ratchet and Clank proved us that these guys know how to make some ridiculous stuff when it comes to weapons, and then they come out, and, and every gun in this game pretty much has a secondary feature that just makes it just batshit crazy, and it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, and so that's really the that was the main draw for me was getting to figure out and how how to use these weapons in certain situations and whatnot, and that magnum, yeah, that that was that was sweet. I mean, normally in a game, you know, you pick up a pistol and you're just like, ah, you know, I need to yeah. find something else. But this pistol is like, you know, it's like the rocket launcher pretty much. I mean, in a way, it can <laughs> it, it can definitely deal some massive damage, and you want to hold on to it. Um, 
So yeah, so, I mean, that, that, that's a huge part of the game for me personally. I'm not a yeah. huge fan of co-op, and and uh, and I'm not a huge fan of the story. I just didn't, I wasn't wasn't drawn in, uh, you know, like like some other shooters or some other games out there. But uh, the the guns definitely made me feel uh, like I was a boss. <laughs> yeah, the weapons yeah. are very creative. I mean, the grenades in their own are are really interesting. I mean, this game was designed from number one to be a Halo competitor. It didn't really. You know, accomplish that because they kind of quit with the whole Halo thing, and Halo Reach is kind of a joke. But I mean, the bubble shield and a lot of a lot of weapons you just gained a massive following. Well, I just want you to know. That. Yeah, you. I mean, you started off with the Master Queef joke, and I kind of let it go. But now I'm gonna have to tell you. I mean. People are gonna look at look for you in the street and like just murder you. You're gonna be walking down the street and all of a sudden someone just smacks you upside the head, you fall down, they start kicking and beating you to death, and when they're done they say, Halo, bitch! <laughs> End of. And they just leave you bleeding in the sidewalk. You just got teabagged, bitch. How about that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, there's certain games that you have to be careful publicly uh, bashing because the the fan base is just ridiculous for Halo. I uh... yeah, I know. I was a monster <laughs> Halo fan, honest. I mean, Halo Two, Halo Three. I took those very seriously. What did you like about Halo Reach, it's just it didn't bring anything new. It didn't even look like a different game. So, Not to me. At least. So it was reaching. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, forget it. We're just going to move on. <laughs> Anyways, yes, already a great point. The weapons and resistance are definitely a selling point, even though that they aren't really... Uh, not all of them are really viable in a multiplayer setting. They're still creative as hell, and that is definitely one of the points yeah. that makes the game unique. I even, you know, I even played the multiplayer quite a bit online. I don't know if you guys did or not, but I had some fun with it. It was it was pretty fun for for a while. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't to the level that you know Modern Warfare Two gave to me, where it was you know I played it every day. But it definitely it definitely did do its its part. And the weapons, you know, that was one thing I always, I thought about before I started playing it. I'm like, God, I don't know if these weapons are going to work. But they did. You know, it was it was kind of a personal opinion about the about which weapon was the best. It didn't lend to looking at the power uh, of the weapon. Oh, this gun can take him down in two bullets um, at this range. No, it it lended to oh, you're you're good with using the the razor blade shooter thing. Well, I suck at aiming that thing, so I'm just going to keep with this gun. And you could kill based on literally the skill at which you your dexterity was you know was, mm -hmm. if you could move the controller in a certain way you could use this weapon better than some other some other people so it was pretty it was pretty cool to see a game like that that catered to different people's play styles um, so I I wouldn't mind playing the online portion of this game but you know the story I just really couldn't care less about mm. yeah the, the story didn't really didn't really so sold itself to me either I'm I wasn't a big fan of the story basically like I said I kind of forced myself to go through it but I have to say what really pissed me off and, and Resistance 2, because I went through the whole game, the sections that really pissed me off is like the sections where there's just lots and lots of those aliens coming out of the eggs. Yeah. And yeah. oh my god, I was just like, not this again, please! <laughs> not anymore, because then you're like, okay, the best thing to use in those situations is the shotgun. But yeah. the shotgun has so little ammo, you're like, Oh man! And then you're like, no, but I want to save the shotgun for something harder. And then you just get completely swarmed and die, and you're like, oh. Yeah. Are you ah. talking about like the outside portions? Like I, 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 I know what you're talking about. Like when you're in the backyards in the urban environment, and they're just like popping everywhere. Like, yeah, that, that guy section. And then there's the section where you're in the in the train tunnel, mm -hmm. where everything is black, yeah. and all of a sudden it's like, oh look, seven of them. Directly in my face. <laughs> yep. And you can't move. You can't do anything. They're just like, nom, 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 nom. Yep. <laughs> <Jeez>. Totally agree. <laughs> did, you, did you guys actually finish that game? Yeah, I, I beat them both. Okay, so Viridia beat it, but I don't think that Hengist and, and Anakin did. But let me just tell you something. Your final weapon is your hands. <laughs> the final weapon in the oh game my God. is your hands. <laughs> That's just I'm going to tell you and leave it at that. But anyways, uh, going back to the actual Resistance 3 game, I just wanted to say that um, one of the things that I noticed there is that they're using the scenery a whole lot more than they did in Resistance 2. Like, I was going in this house, and then all of a sudden the house is just exploding, the roof is coming off, stuff is blowing up all over the place. So it's a lot, they interact a lot more with the environment. Um, and apart from that, I just have to say that when we actually started playing in co-op, like I, me and my friend playing in split screen, I was like, now this, 
this I could play like all night long. <laughs> oh, also, <laughs> damn. I'm, 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 I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just completely uh, on on the co-op thing. I'm, I love co-op. So when we started playing both together, it's like, oh yeah, you go that way, I go this way. We're gonna do this thing that way. And basically discussing strategies and stuff like that. Yeah, totally into that. So at that point, I was like, no, this is fun. For the single player, I probably couldn't care less. But playing through the campaign cooperatively with a friend, I loved it. Nice. I see. I, I I wish I was like that. I mean, I Anakin and I tried to do some co-op, and it didn't work out. We just <laughs> <laughs> it worked out fine. <laughs> well, obviously <laughs> not. Uh, we 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 attempted to do Portal Two, and then we just never got back to it. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, everybody loved it, though, because, uh, know. you know, Viridia had gone through a portion of it. I had not, because if you play co-op on Portal 2, it's a whole different set of puzzles and maps. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, I was, like, completely new to the co-op side. I'd already beaten a single-player game, and he's like, hey, come on, let's do Portal. Everybody's going to love it. I'm, you know, he's basically, like, leading me along and, like, you know, throwing me in traps that I don't know anything about. He's like, hey, yeah, just stand right there. Uh-huh, stay right there. Right there. Don't move. Don't and I go, eh! And I'm like, you jackass. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. That was funny. But So, if if you guys wanted to try co-op and you're a big Demon Souls fan, why don't you get Anakin to play Demon Souls and no, do co-op? Here yeah. we go again. Anakin has to play the game of the week. God dang yeah, it. do you know I played League of Legends this week? Yeah, I, 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 you wrote me something about that, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> we got called into a meeting, so we were just kind of going about it with no communication whatsoever. Exactly. <laughs> I don't even, I, I tell you the truth, and you, you know, Rui, you're probably going to hate me for this, but I'm, I never even heard of that game. <laughs> what? <laughs> No, I'm it's, not surprised because I mean you're more of a console gamer than a PC gamer, right? I am. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Um, you and know I, that and he lives on the moon. Don't forget that. Oh shit. Sure. <laughs> 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 well, no. Okay, so I, 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 I've heard the name, but like, it was like in passing somewhere. I mean, like I had never even read anything in a magazine about it or anything like that. Um, well, it's true. I mean, you know, that kind of game is not going to be even. I mean, obviously, being console. You know, it would never cross your path. I mean, even if you've heard the name, you wouldn't you wouldn't associate it with anything. I mean, I'm with you. You know, I used to be the same way about console games when I was a PC gamer only. I heard about, you know, even even things like Halo when it first came out. Obviously, you couldn't escape the marketing of Halo. But even at the time, I was like, wait a minute, Halo? That used to be a PC game. What the hell? And then, you know, and then it came out <laughs> yeah. for the Xbox, the original you know, Xbox. You know, what's the, you know what's the funny thing? It actually, it, it was actually fully developed for the Macintosh. I remember that because it was yeah. made by Bungie, who made Marathon, which was one of the only solid titles for a Mac. You know, it was the yeah. only first-person yeah. shooter on a Mac back in the day. And not only did it never actually came back to the Macintosh, it never even made it back to the PC either. I know. <laughs> I was, yeah, it was so upsetting. You know, I, I called Bungie up uh, for, you know, when they were leaving and Microsoft was taking it over and I had some ideas for their, for their marketing for the next one. I had a, like a new game title. I was really hoping they were going to do it, but they wrote me back and said, you know, you're an idiot. It, I, I wanted them to call it Halo Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> He's thought of that all day today. I, I've been he's waiting for that, that all day, yeah. He's been waiting to say that, I guarantee you. He thought of that at like 2 o'clock this afternoon while he was watering his plants or something. But he's like, I'm using that in the cast. <laughs> all right, anyway, moving on. Moving on. Let's um, talk about another game that came out, Verdi. Did you get to try uh, Dead Island? <laughs> no, I didn't. And, and this is this is something that we've been actually uh, debating about. Um you know, we, I don't remember how long ago it was. We came to a, a conclusion. I said it was going to be okay. And, and I you said, said it was, was going to suck. Right. Um, you know, I'm kind of, <laughs> listen, listen. Okay. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say I was right, but you're, you're kind of, we're kind of both right. It kind of is doing good and bad at the same time. Well, it sold like crazy. <laughs> Did you see? Oh, oh, it sold like two million yeah. copies already. And I'm like, I am telling you, it is because of that trailer from March. I am yeah. telling you, it is all yeah. because of that. Because Just, the game is not good. It is not that good. Well, Just out of curiosity, how can a game do good and bad at the same time? <laughs> 
Let me tell you, Rui. Okay, it's like it's selling to... really good, but it's actually trash. That's exactly, that's exactly <laughs> it's right. It's true. It's, it's selling extremely well, but the game is so glitched and bugged that people are just having a fit about it. So, in a way, I was right. It did do very well, but the gameplay is like... It's probably going to be. I mean, that, there's going to be a stack of these things at GameStop. You know, I'm telling you, a month from now, nobody is going to refer to this game. Nobody. I'm telling you, right now, it's all hype, and the co-op is selling it. A lot of people are digging like the idea of co-op or whatever. <laughs> you know, and I'm telling you, okay, everybody is already done with this game. There's just nothing else that the game has to offer. It's you just, know, what's funny. Hmm. I was actually at a friend's house today, and as soon as I got to his house, the guy's like, dude, you got to get that island, dude. We're, we're going to have to buy that island, dude. It's, it's going to be amazing. Trust me, it's going to be amazing. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm sorry. Nope. Not going to happen. I, I, in my sub box, I literally have people that I've, I've been subscribed to for years now that haven't put videos out in about a year. And they're, they're popping online just going, here, look at this glitch I found. Look at this glitch. Then this guy, I mean, okay, if you guys have ever played Oblivion, you know, back when it first came out, there were, there were a few glitches where you could dupe items and stuff. A few. <laughs> shut up, shut up. <laughs> a couple of them. So this game, man, I mean, it's literally like this guy was like, all right, so I was playing yesterday. If you hold the left trigger and hit the Y button, boop, I mean, like his weapon starts duplicating itself and flying onto the ground. He's like, I, he's like, I just, I spent like four hours making this weapon, and now I've got like fifteen of them. Yeah, and he's like putting them in his pack. He's like, yeah, you, you know, you can go ahead and do this. And then I was talking to to Tar Fox last night, and he's, you know, he, I was like, so how's the game? Because he's been playing it with Delta. Oh right. And he, and he said, I'm really pissed off. I was like, why? He's like, well. I leveled my guy up to take on these certain areas. He's like, I leveled him to 21, and then Delta wanted to play, and I was like, all right, cool. Jumped into a game with Delta. It reduced his level to Delta's level so that they were on the same, you know. <laughs> then he goes back to play his single player again, and he never gets his levels back. So he's like... <laughs> Oh my god, I would be time. so mad. Oh yeah, all the time he spent leveling up to 21, now he's back down to 13 again, and he's stuck like in the middle of like a high-level place or something. <laughs> so, it's like, basically, I, th I think that developers of that island, the, the message they're trying to send is, Yo dog, we heard you like leveling, so we put some leveling in your leveling, so that you can level while you level. <laughs> Exactly. Grinding, grinding bitches. <laughs> you know, uh, apparently, too, you know, the, the game is so screwed up on every platform. You know, the, the one that got the most scandal was the PC version, because did you guys hear when the game was released on Steam, it was the wrong version. It was actually like a late beta version that got pushed over to Steam, and that's so what everybody downloaded. It wasn't <laughs> even the finished copy, and they had to, like, patch the hell out of it. It was terrible. So the initial purchase that people made at Steam, they basically bought like some bizarre, like screwed up version, and that was everybody's introduction to this game on the PC. But even worse, everybody was like, "Oh my God, it's so good on Xbox and PS3. You, you, you poor PC people, wait till they get it fixed, and you'll you'll experience a great game." Well, all of a sudden, about three or four days later, everybody on Xbox and PS3 is going, "Hey, I'm stuck. It won't even let me go forward. This game is screwed up." You know, <laughs> so they had planned the 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 developers for Dead Island, Deep Silver, they planned. On, on throwing out a bunch of DLC very, very quickly, you know, because they didn't, they, they, I think they realized what I realized, which is nobody's going to care about this game in another six, you know, six months yeah. or less. So they said, okay, we want to get the, the DLC out there quick. Well, they actually pushed their DLC back so they could fix the damn game <laughs> on all the platforms. It's just that much of a mess. Yeah. You know, well, you know, what was my first reaction when I saw the, um, the trailer. Because I was with a couple of friends that were like, oh my god, look at the trailer. The trailer is so amazing. It's going to be an awesome game. This game is going to be amazing. They're, they're both saying this. It's going to be an amazing game. And I'm looking at the trailer and I'm like, yeah, the trailer looks great. And then uh, I just said, zombie game. I'll pass. Well, yeah, and it's a trailer. I mean, it's not even like a gameplay well, trailer. It was just a good trailer. Well, and that's what that, – if you watch any of the reviews, like, they, they go into a very, you know, very hardcore about, well, you remember that awesome trailer? Yeah, there's nothing like that in this game ever. <laughs> exactly. Just throw that out of your mind. That was just a big piece of garbage, you know. I mean, and, and we all knew it was. And, I mean, I even said that in one of the episodes. I was like, yep. don't let these freaking trailers fool you. You that's know, right. they, that's right. these, things, these things are produced and directed by somebody who's not – he doesn't even know what the game is. He just knows, okay, well, I need to make something that will make somebody cry, and it's got to have zombies in it. And I've had this idea since I was four, so let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> since I was do four. <laughs> no, I, I don't think you can you can you can say that because I think it was actually like a professional company that made the trailer. I don't think it was the game developers. And, they and, actually and maybe did, not. You know, that's what I said. Agreed. No, that's what I said. Oh, right. The right. We know that, that trailer said, won an award. Some... Did you know that? That trailer won an advertising award. Yeah, that, yeah that's <laughs> what I'm saying. It's not, it wasn't the game developer who did it. It was somebody who had no idea what the game was even about who put that thing together. And, I mean, you guys are, uh, not you guys, but a lot of the people out there are basing like, you know, their, their love for this game on that trailer. That, oh, it's going to be awesome because of the trailer. The trailer that had nothing to do with the gameplay experience. Let me tell but you, it, I've been it, saying the same thing, by the way, about Battlefield. Battlefield, I, I tell you, Battlefield 3 and, and DICE have one of the best marketing departments out there because all these trailers are just unfreaking believable. But the problem is those kinds of action games, Battlefield, uh, Call of Duty, Medal of Honor, whatever, it's all about the feel of the game. And you wait, cannot wait advertise feel. Right. Wait a minute. A lot of those trailers are actually gameplay footage taken directly from the they Frostbite are. 2 engine. They are. But you know what? It's not about how good it looks. And there's no exactly. doubt that the game looks awesome. It is about the feel of the oh, game while you're plays. playing. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Especially a first-person shooter. I mean, those. They, this is a game like... I mean, it's a game a lot like, wow, you're going to be spending a ton of time with it. And I mean, if the controls are sluggish, you know, if, if the, the combat doesn't feel spot on, if the hitboxes don't feel right, if you feel like you're just literally getting, you know, you just ripped off the whole time it's gonna suck it doesn't matter how good the game looks um well you know this week i was talking with some of the guys that i go to lunch with we talk about games every day at lunch it's like you know constant and and remember these guys are all mmo guys you know and so i'm always like the odd man out over here talking about call of duty and they're like oh you suck you play call of duty anyway so the point <laughs> is they they actually talk about wow the same way that i talk about call of duty the uh, the issue is with Call of Duty is it's all about the feel you know it's it's all about like you know it's like the input there's no input lag you know and it was based on the old uh, Quake Three engine so the thing is with that you know it was it was like really really solid and World of Warcraft apparently is the same way mm -hmm. World of Warcraft apparently like when you get into a World of Warcraft match. When you like cast spells, when you hit buttons and they and you, you you perform whatever it is you're trying to perform, apparently in World of Warcraft it is it is instantaneous. Okay, this is what I'm told. I'm not a, I'm not a WoW player, but the game engine and the way that the network code is written, it is it is instantaneous. And when the, when these guys that I know that are hardcore WoW players, when they go into these other MMOs, it's not necessarily even the gameplay or the graphics, or the storyline, or the universe. It's none of that. Some of that stuff is much better than, than Blizzard's WoW game, you know, in, in a lot of different ways. It's the feel of the way the MMO works. If you press a button in WoW, apparently your character does exactly what you want them to do near instantly. And in these other MMOs, depending on what's going on, depending on the server load, depending on the way the game engine is written, between, you know, again, depending on network code, <coughs> It's like all of a sudden there's this weird lag that, you know, it, even if it's like an eighth of a second longer than WoW, suddenly it feels like your character isn't doing exactly like what you were hoping. I mean, Rude, do you, I mean, you and Will, you guys are WoW players. Do you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, on WoW versus these other MMOs? You're commenting on the service stability, I suppose, or at least the, well, the so engine stability of the game. It's exactly. Itself, and I mean... It's not really renowned for having those things as being reliable, but it's certainly a much higher quality in competing MMOs. There's no question about that. I'm go. I'm I mean, going to have really to just <clears throat> go ahead. Will, sorry. It's more just that competitors haven't actually introduced something better. Not necessarily that World of Warcraft is exceptional in that regard. I'm I'm going to have to pitch into that and uh, say that I, I actually think that I can completely relate to what Anakin is saying because throughout the years I've played several um, MMOs like I've tried out Aeon, I've tried out Guild Wars and I've tried out World of Warcraft and World of Warcraft definitely has this thing mm -hmm. that is completely different from all the others in regards to how the way your, your skills work. It's, this, basically it's this intangible, right? It's something you can't really put words on. Yeah, it. it's, it's you, just you can't feel. put words on it. But let, let's put it like this, for instance, you're trying to cast a skill while you're running. Let's say you have an instant skill on, on a character. And in a game like Aeon, for instance, it's like, okay, I want to do my skill. And you click your, your skill and your character is like, starts walking towards the enemy. And the simple fact that your character needs to be in a determined position, like at this exact distance of your enemy in order to perform that skill, 
basically sometimes it makes it feel like god damn it why won't you do what i say in world of warcraft in world of warcraft it's not like that at all because like you're actually like if you the game gives you a little bit of an edge so let's say if you're not exactly in contact with your enemy but you're at a reasonable distance the game cuts you some slack and lets you cast your skill off in the case of paladins the game cuts you an enormous amount of slack when you're doing your stuns i've seen people stunning other people like from the other side of the map but that's a different story altogether <laughs> right, basically what right. i'm saying is that world of warcraft cuts you a lot of slack in the controls and distances and stuff like that so it feels very natural other games on the other side don't so it's like it's very rigid it's like you have to be exactly at this distance so if your enemy is like one millimeter away your skill won't come off at the right time and you're just like you piece of crap do what i say and that happens to you in a lot of games it definitely yeah. does so it just comes and, back to feel like i was saying though you know it's uh, exactly trailers and marketing can only take you so far you know obviously the graphics is really about the only thing that you can take away from the game even things like the sound engine these trailers are you know the, they're made with the exact sound sometimes they even remix the game sound to make the absolute best end product yeah. for the trailer so, best example of what you're referring to is the kills on two trailer no oh man. my god yep. absolutely absolutely but the reason this conversation came about because we we're discussing battlefield 3 and how you guys weren't confident that the engine will perform as well as it looks to appear in the in the trailers have any of you actually played the alpha i have not i got the pleasure of playing it and let me just tell you first-hand experience it runs like a glove flawless i mean really? you might not expect something that beautiful to run so smooth but we're talking even better than call of duty modern warfare standards it's right, so but... responsive it's so beautiful the God, game is going I to be a masterpiece true. i hope it that's will. true man i'm telling you i just if that alone you telling me that is just going to be uh, reinforcing what I hope is going to be an actual Call of Duty competitor, a real oh, it will Call of Duty change. competitor. It will change the market, man. It will. I hope. Man, I'm really hoping. I'm excited about it. See, just you giving feedback like that on an actual playable version, I'm excited for it. I, uh, I really do hope it, it changes the whole gaming genre right now for, for, you know, for first-person shooter action games. Also, does it, does, it, does Battlefield yeah, not come out? Sorry, does it not come out next month? October yes. 28th? 3rd? 27th? 24th. <laughs> <laughs> Which I may be wrong, too, it? but it's it's either 24th or 28th. No, I think he's <laughs> right. I actually said it in one of my videos recently. It's, it's in late October. Oh, shit. Yeah. oh, my God. You know all these fans are like, you idiots! My God, you suck! Here's, Everybody knows what it comes what up. Here's do, Anakin. For the next <laughs> podcast, we're going to bring in Chris Voltzis, and he's going to tell us everything we need to know about Battlefield. He's going to tell us, like, the name of the first person that ever worked in the Battlefield series, the name oh of his God. son, the name of his, the name of his grandson. He's going to tell us all we need to know, dude. <laughs> he's an expert, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's basically going to tell you which time the graphics artist goes to the bathroom usually <laughs> it's uh by the way it is october 25th in the united states europe is the 28th so um, wow we we're all wrong <laughs> i was right i know my day fourth you said no, every i said 24th or 28th <laughs> next time i'm just gonna say man i can't wait for battlefield on october 20th <laughs> <laughs> It's somewhere between 20 and 30. It's going to be fine. Trust oh me. Oh, my God. Anyway. <laughs> God. Well, we have one more game that I'm extremely excited for coming out uh, Monday. Well, actually, this this is it's coming out at midnight Tuesday. Um, so when this comes out, I literally have one day to wait, and I'm excited for it. And that's Gears of War 3, and I'm sure none of you have played Gears of War before. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, well, wait, I, was a, wait. I was a Gears fanatic, man. Get Gears out. one and two. Bring it on! Oh, yeah. Tell me all. Tell. Are you still a fan of the franchise? Are you excited for the third one? I don't still play it. I'm extremely excited for the third one. I don't know if I'll buy it though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm extremely excited. I'm probably not. This gonna is gonna be it. freaking awesome. But <laughs> no, no, honestly, I, Gears of War. Never three. mind. <laughs> I mean, there have been plenty of third-person shooters, you know, throughout the console history, but Gears of War 3 is really the one title that set the standard for gear for, for third-person action shooting. It's it's the end-all be-all of third-person shooters. The cover system was revolutionary when it came out. We, we saw it adapted into things like Uncharted on PlayStation, but really it was the progenitor for the that level of comp competitive play. And, the whole, you know, of course, the chainsaw. Who, 
how can you not enjoy sawing somebody in half? The Gears of War franchise is awesome. That is Love. true. How can you not enjoy chainsawing someone in half? That seems like a perfect valid argument. That, you know what? That's what I'm going to name the podcast. How can you not enjoy sawing somebody in half? <laughs> Seriously, I, I feel like going out right now, buying a chainsaw, and just chainsawing the first person I see in the street. Exactly, really? How could you not enjoy that? Just, like, start on the head and just work your way down to the waist. Okay. And it'll be even better if money pops out. It'll be just like we talked about earlier. <laughs> Jesus. That'd be amazing. This in all honesty, though. violence, okay? Gears of War 3 it looks fantastic i mean it looks sensational i've never seen an xbox title that look this good before yeah, this, am i right i think this game i think this game is literally pushing the xbox to its best potential so far and yeah you know when a you were talking of, about resistance yeah. 3 i was like you know i've got to i've got to chime in and talk about gears 3 um you know that it's gonna it's gonna be pushing it i i've seen the gameplay i've seen tons of hd gameplay and it just looks absolutely crazy and and i mean the second one is good and oh, yeah. the scale the scale of the brumac battles and, and and riding the reapers and stuff like that this is looks like they've done 10 times that and if it, if, if that's the case then this is going to be one hell of an experience not only that you got four player co-op that's going to be crazy i mean I, I don't know what four people you know are going to play this together. I I don't have three people that are going to play it with me. But <laughs> if you have that option, it's going to be there for you. That's going to that has to be awesome. Um, yeah. Well, it's exciting because you know we since we've got Cliffy B coming on down the scope on episode thirty five next week, it's just going to yeah. be amazing that we get to talk to him. <laughs> yeah. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> So no. go spam Cliffy B's Twitter and remind him that he's supposed. Don't tell him not to forget that he's going to be on Down the Scope episode thirty-five. Just go remind him. I've already talked to him about it. It's already a done deal. But just you might want to go remind him and send the link over to our channel on his Twitter, just just in case. <laughs> I don't know. You know what he? I in all honesty, he kind of sound, he kind of seems like a douchebag. You ever seen that movie Grandma's oh, Great? Movie? Yeah, okay, you just ruined our chances. <laughs> Oh my I'm God! Gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. He won't listen to this podcast, by the way. He'll just listen to the Twitter. But have you ever seen Grandma's Boy? <laughs> yes. JP. Yeah, he's just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he reminds me of that guy. Just like he 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 finally got something knocked into his head to take off the trench coat. <laughs> with there. That's what he reminds me of. Like he just seems like he's that that prodigy child that that made yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He always reminds me of Seth Green with an attitude. <laughs> Aren't they both like four foot eleven or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! Okay, now I even ruined our chances even more. Now he's really uh, not going to come on here. I tricked you. I tricked you. Great, I'm just gonna nice. Ask that anyway if he's ever seen Grandma's Boy, and then I'll just leave it at that. But <laughs> <laughs> holy crap! Anyway, um, so yeah, we I... love you, Cliffy. We love you. <laughs> We are excited about Gears 3, and Anakin, I know you haven't played it, right? Well, I get this, okay? No, I no, played... no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Let me stop you right there no, and no. just say, I already know what he's going to say. He's going to, I don't like how there's like this chest high wall. <laughs> This is what I always say. It, it's like there's, there's these constant chest high walls. Every time you see somebody, it's like, oh wait, there's somebody I gotta shoot. Oh, would you looky here, right in front of me? There just happens to be a chest high wall. That seems like <laughs> no, 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 no. The cover system is what makes that game. That's what the game. That's what sets the gameplay apart. Is the cover system. But you know, just, in the first one, it was it was a novel idea. It was very interesting. But the problem is now all these other games adopted it, and the series obviously has maintained it. And it's just like now it's like almost a parody of itself with the cover system. It's like, oh, look, there's a chest eye wall. No, no, no. <laughs> Hold on now. I want now. you to do something tomorrow. I want you to do – I want all of us to do something and kind of report back. Go out into your daily life and just look at how many things are chest high that you could go into cover behind. In real life, <laughs> how many desks do you have in your office? Oh, God. Okay, have, you're going to be disappointed because I'm in Portugal, so – What is everything just, two feet tall? What the hell? No, it's just you go <laughs> – you go outside and uh, basically it's there's not a whole lot of places for you to hide behind basically <laughs> like that. What do you live in like the you know the the, the Star so Trek few... room or the you know the holodeck or something? There's no furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Rui, tell us what's going on in Portugal. <laughs> well, why Rui doesn't like gears? There's he just doesn't understand the chest high. <laughs> Like, what is all this there's, weird stuff in the environment? In Portugal, there's nothing. We all live on a big flat plain. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Jeez. It's, well, like, 
if you want to get yourself some cover, here's what you got to do. Throw yourself on the ground, dig yourself a little hole, and get on it. <laughs> Make your own chest high cover. That's what I said for Cliffy. Here's Good what War 4 needs to have where you can make your own damn cover. Like a fucking well, jackhammer. <laughs> you pull out your jackhammer, it's like, Go, go, I'm making cover! <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, sitting back there. he's fending him off. He got like a co-op thing going where he like takes turns with the jackhammer. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> it's an awesome idea, Cliffy. Like, what I'm saying is that if you're in Portugal, you're lucky enough to find like paved roads. <laughs> Like, want to hide? Like go hide in the dirt. What is Portugal <laughs> populated with like pygmies from the Amazon or something? Where where the hell is civilization in Portugal? <laughs> I'm, 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 what, what is the civilization you're speaking? Of? <laughs> Jesus, if you don't have paved roads. How hard was it to get on Skype tonight? <laughs> I exploded midway already. You guys didn't notice that? I'm not even kidding. I got disconnected midway through the podcast. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> didn't even miss me. Welcome back, Rui. Welcome back. <laughs> Well, anyway, back to Gears of War. Here's the thing. You know, the deal is, is I played the first one uh, almost all the way through. I actually got, you know, probably within an hour of finishing it. And at the time, something else took my attention away. I enjoyed it for the storyline. I did feel like it was kind of a one-trick pony. And, of course, this can be said for a lot of games, okay? It really can. But for whatever reason, it didn't, it didn't maintain enough value to me to continue with it. And then Did the you try the multiplayer? Well, I did, you know, I actually did the co-op and, uh, you know, I, I had a pretty good time with it. Uh, again, I played the co-op for a long time, you know, and it was just one of those things at the time, I just, it just felt so contrived. It was like every time I came around a corner, even when I was playing co-op, it was like, there's a bunch of enemies, I come into a large room and I drop the cover behind the, the first chest high wall that I run into in the room. And I just felt like this was like so repetitive over and over. But let me tell so you, the thing is, my complaint... Basically what, really? Basically, <laughs> ahead, what I'm you're here. saying is that you're you're playing a game of whack-a-mole. <laughs> Somewhat. Like they, pop their head, they pop their head out, pop! It's true. It's mold. true. Okay, ah. it, it really is true. I, and, and, Will, I know I'm killing you over here. I know. But the thing is, let me tell you, I felt like the second one really did transcend the first one in the gameplay. They added so much. I, I love very early on when you're on the those massive, like, uh, full-wheeled, you know, crazy things. You're going down the side of the, the cliff. Uh, you know, you're driving down the road, and they, the, all those meteors are, are coming at you, and you got to shoot them out of the air and all that. Meteors. <laughs> Whatever the hell they are. And I, I was enjoying, you know, I was enjoying all that. I, I when, you know, when your truck crashed, and you, you had to fall off and jump in, and then there's that big crazy thing in the ground. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm all over it, you know? This is, this is a good time. But, you know, even then, after a while, you know, they were trying to change up the gameplay. For whatever reason, I just felt when they got back to the basics, which was just you and your crew, um, you know, and the guy that constantly whines over his wife, I, I just kind of got Don't sick. Even, no, <laughs> no, -uh. Constantly whines over his wife, you ass. That was one of the best, most sentimental scenes ever. My wife! So, Why? I don't even know, man. I'm, that, that's not even what I want to hear. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. I know you didn't even make it that far, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I really, it was, it was a game, honestly, at the time, sadly. And, you know, this is, this is something we were talking about before, about me going back to Mass Effect. My, my deal is, at the time, I think what happened is when I tried Gears of War, it was a little bit slower paced. I had been playing Call of Duty hardcore. I'd been playing a lot of PC games. And the controls were, were a little, not laggy, but it was a much slower paced game. Even though it was a combat game, it still felt slower paced. And I think my problem was, really, I, I, I joke about the game. I actually respect Gears of War, but it just didn't speak to me at the time because it was a different pace. And it was a lot slower than what I was used to. And sadly, Call of Duty ruined me on slower paced games. Okay, <laughs> here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw a suggestion at you. Oh, God. Straight up. Suggestion. I'm not sure how much this game is going for right now. I'm just going to tell you I paid full price for it. I loved it. It lasted me for about six hours, and I don't regret any single dime that I spent on that particular game. What game? Vanquish. Oh, I, you know, uh, tr I tried it. Oh, it felt oh, like Years uh, of War. <laughs> I, I've actually done a full Let's Play on my channel of Vanquish. What do you think about Vanquish then, Viridia? I didn't. I didn't necessarily dislike it. I, I thought it was it was a very fast, fun cover shooter, and, and I see where you're going with this. It's it is what way I, faster than Gears. 
What I'm saying is that how what you just said, and it can completely confuses me when you say, "Oh, it felt like Gears." I'm I'm sorry, no way. I mean that game. It's like, oh, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead, put myself on my knees, and like rocket propel myself <laughs> upstairs, and then when I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and do a frontal flip. <laughs> And basically shoot the crap out of everyone in slow motion, <laughs> then go yeah. back to the ground and punch some guy in the face. Yeah. Wait, that's that's not what you that's not what you made gears. <laughs> Maybe I've been playing not. this other game. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> I, I really I really did try Vanquish. It was a little too anime for me. I think is what it what happened. It felt like an anime version of his work. It's almost it impossible, it unless it's Call of Duty, to impress Anakin. Just <laughs> it's sad. No, I mean, it really is sad. It's just, you know, I, I really like the the instant gratification and the crazy over-top action of killing people in Call of Duty. I, I don't know what it is. It, I'm just, I'm warped I, that way. I think you were just ruined by multiplayer, period. It, it's true. It is true. But, you know, Dead Space spoke to me. Why, you know, why can't we have more of those? Dead Space was an amazing franchise. I love Dead Space both is slow as hell. I know. That's what's, that's what's crazy. <laughs> Dead Seriously, Space just if was you want, amazing. If you want a sense of gratification, a real sense of gratification and achievement, nothing can beat Demon Souls. No. Right now, when Dark Souls comes out. When Dark Souls comes out, that's gonna trump that. Yeah, you're we, such right, a we, fanboy. <laughs> all the time. Go ahead and ignore them for a minute. Let's talk about Demon Souls a little bit. Let's oh <laughs> Jesus! Hang on. Let me put my mic down. I think I gotta go mow the grass. <laughs> Jeez. I'm serious, man. I, what happened to Gears of War? <laughs> I'm with you, on. Will. <laughs> I actually even brought that up. We had, in one of our previous episodes, we said uh, one of the the emails was, "What is your greatest gaming accomplishment?" And I said, "Beating Demon Souls." That's literally probably my greatest. It, it felt in, so good. In normal mode or in New Game Plus? New Game Plus. I've done. I beat it four times. Uh, New Game Plus every my time. God. Yeah. Oh my god. You. You're my hero. I haven't beaten it in, in New Game Plus. I just really? beaten it on normal. Yeah. I mean, I, it's not because it's hard. It's just because I had all these other games. Let's put it like this. When you play World of Warcraft for like five years straight, you get a lot of stuff backed up. <laughs> yeah. So basically, it's like I'm doing Demon Souls. I'm doing Red Dead Redemption. I'm doing Call of Duty Black Ops. I'm doing Uncharted Mortal Kombat. Everything. I'm all over the place right now, basically making up for the time I've spent in WoW. Yeah, no, I, I totally, I, I get it. I, I just, Demon Souls spoke to me. I, I, you know, I see these people on there that have glitched their way to the top. I just went through it four times in a row. But yeah, I agree. I, you know, and I think I think we need to talk about that some week. But anyway, Years of War is coming out <laughs> Tuesday. So <laughs> yeah, that other game we were speaking about, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the game that's not as good as Dark Souls, but exactly. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'll be bringing you uh, my my full thoughts next week on that game for sure, um, and hopefully I'll have, I'll have a let's play up on my channel of it. Okay, wait, wait, uh, what okay. did I miss? I was trying to get my weed eater started. What, 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 what we do at some point? Weed eater in the morning. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Basically, what I was what I was wanted to say is also that um, Gears of War is one of the games that made me hesitate when I was picking my system of choice because I couldn't afford like to have both the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, and as I was was basically selecting the system that I wanted. Gears of War weighed in heavily in favor of the 360, but basically God of War 3 kind of ripped its arms off, and yeah. <laughs> it's like Kratos was like, sit down before you fall down, son. <laughs> <laughs> or sit down before I tear your friggin' head off and do something grotesque with it. Nice. Uh, you missed well, out, man. Gears of War is did. legendary. Good, I... <laughs> I, I, I do agree. I those I mean those two games they really can't compare other than the fact that they've got the same pretty much name, Gears of War God of War. But I, I, I do think that Gears of War is uh, yeah. is very worthy, even though it is, you know, kinda it can be repetitive. Um I I, gotta, I, I gotta, go, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I got a technological question for you guys. I mean, have you seen the footage of Gears of War three? And I know, I know, Viridia has. What about your other two guys? Yeah, yeah, I've watched it. It looks, it really does look pretty damn good. I mean, it's I probably am... one of the best looking Xbox games I've seen. What My do you mean is, I haven't? The Xbox three hundred and sixty came out how many years ago? Five now. Yeah. Quite some while. Two thousand six. Yeah, I think five years now. Do we think that? The Xbox 360 will actually surpass this graphic, this visual appeal in its lifespan. I mean, I don't know. I think it, it can. I, th I honestly think it can. Um, 
I don't I don't know. I I mean, when it comes to graphical appeal, other than Gears of War, like I uh, I think of like Crisis and stuff like that. I think it really just really. You know, well, I think of Crisis, Crisis too. Yeah. yeah, Crisis too really does look amazing. Yeah, it, it, it does. Uh, it's hard um, to compete with that. It really is. <laughs> But I mean, it, it, it comes down to I think I think that it's it's an untapped thing. I think both consoles still have a lot of a push and pull left. I think that the developers just have to put the time in to get it out of there. But to be I don't completely know. honest, I'm gonna have to go ahead and go the other way. I think that the Xbox 360 is basically if they push it any more than what they've already have. I think it's going to just explode and set your house on fire. <laughs> it's not even no, going to red ring of right. death anymore. It's just going to like it's blow gonna, up. It's going to be like, a fire <laughs> hazard, I guess. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think so, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, I honestly can... I, I see these consoles lasting us a little bit longer. I, I don't see the, the need for a new console in the next two years. I really don't because, you know, it, how, how much can it change? I mean, you really I have see- to think about it. When you say, I see these consoles lasting us a little bit longer, I have to tell you, why don't you go ahead and speak with anyone who bought L.A. Noir? Yeah. A lot of people are going to tell you, my console kind of didn't last me that long after I started. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Wait, really? What? It overheated a whole bunch of Xbox 360s, and they died from L.A. Noir. Yeah, I did. I remember that. Did Oh, a couple I didn't, of I didn't know that. I, but basically, like, you turn on the game and the console was just like... Pew. Yeah, in fact, I, uh, at the time that I heard about that, I was joking at lunch and I, uh, I called it L.A. No More. Sorry. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, so, yeah, we're looking for... Those are the games that we're pretty much looking for. So we, we chatted a little bit about those. Now we're going to go on to a topic that uh, that we that was emailed to us actually. Uh, Anakin, why don't you read that to us? Well, the uh, the topic is uh, an interesting one because you know this affects uh, console gamers, PC gamers, uh, even casual gamers within some reason. And you know it, it's funny that we can talk about this in a modern setting because to, to give you a very quick background before we in- introduce the topic, you know, gaming is now the biggest industry financially in the world. It is now overtaken. By a landslide. Yeah, absolutely. It's now overtaken. Uh, you know, Hollywood movies from the United States, uh, even if you start including all of the entertainment media and, and trying to put them all together, it is still overtaking all of these things, books, movies, music. Nothing can compete with the sales of gaming anymore. But at the end of the day, a hardcore gamer, people like us right now talking about games, knowing the names of characters, knowing the platforms, release dates, the developers... Obviously, a hardcore gamer is into games, not just not just a player, but we're talking about hardcore gamer. So the issue is, the topic is, um, are you still, as a hardcore gamer, are you still or have you ever been embarrassed of talking about video games and and uh, you know in a in a non video game social setting? Let's say you're at a party and it's a lot of people who not necessarily are into gaming. Maybe a couple people are. Maybe some people have even heard about some of the games that you like or play. But let's say in general, it's not a gaming conversation setting. Would you be embarrassed to bring up and talk about games and and your hobby? Now I want to I want to point this out because I I honestly do feel that uh, the majority of our audience today they really don't have any idea what we're talking about because I think today even even in you know elementary middle school junior high gaming is literally okay by everybody you're considered an awesome person if you got both consoles you know well but remember though but, there's still a, there's a fine no, 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 line I, there's a fine I agree. line I agree. And it, but that, that's where I'm getting to. In some cases, like when I was back in school, when Anakin was back in school, you were classified as a nerd, a geek, or something like that to play games. And exactly. even in some settings today, um, you know, you're, you're considered uh, a kind of an outcast in some parts of the, in some parts of your family, in some parts of the world, even um, if you do play gaming. So why don't we shoot? Why don't you start us off, uh, Hengast? Why don't you? Why don't you tell us? <laughs> Hengast. Hengast. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> What is it? Like what is you're it? from Texas. He, he, he and Gash start his off. Don't make fun of me. What the hell did I say wrong? What's his name? Hang Guest with an A. It's Hang Guest with an E. <laughs> yeah. Hang Guest. Guest. And I'm Portuguese. Hang- I'm correcting you on this. It's like a chicken and somebody who stays at a hotel. It's Hang Guest. I just got told his name like, like an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, it's a chicken at a hotel, okay? It's a chicken at a hotel. All right. <laughs> right. I got that out of the way. 
<laughs> um, to all the viewers out there or listeners, I guess, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm 20. So you know, I graduated high school about three years ago now, and my generation has grown up with video games. You know, I, I was born after the release of the Nintendo Entertainment System. I grew up with it. I grew up with SNES and all the preceding consoles, or not preceding, succeeding consoles, uh, and so. Everyone in my age group has had gaming be ingrained in their life. But as the other two just stated, in a social setting like high school, for example, it is still considered to be a nerdy activity. And as we all know, with peer pressure and social expectations, that you never want to be an outcast. So I would say the general question is, in a setting where gaming is not really of relevance, say, for instance, at a, a social party that let's just try not to stereotype too hard, doesn't have a bunch of nerds at it or in a classroom or at the workplace or wherever, I would say that it is not necessarily uncomfortable for me to bring up gaming, but it just doesn't make sense. There's not really a reason to bring it up unless there's someone who shares the same interest uh, that I can speak to about it. Now, um, well, well, hang Obviously. on, though. Will, I mean, what, what if you're among these same people that you're describing, uh, mm. and, and everybody's like, man, hey, God, you know, it's like, this is awesome tonight, you know, we're all having drinks, hanging out. What are you going to be doing this weekend? What's going on, Will? Like, what, are, you know, what do you spend your time doing on the weekend? Let's say it's a whole group of people that you don't know real well. Do you just suddenly jump in and go, oh, man, yeah, I'm recording games for YouTube. I'm having an awesome time. Here's this game I'm playing <laughs> right now. Do you, do you say that very Ooh. confidently, or do you go, oh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing this weekend. I, I may play a, a video game. I kind of enjoy that on the side a little bit you know it's, it's no big deal how do you uh, approach it well i mean i'm a, i'm quite confident i mean part of what i do is having confidence and i wouldn't have an issue with that but that most people do and it's just kind of a stigma attached to being a gamer you know you're unfit you're nerdy you got thick ass glasses acne all these i mean you just get associated with this stereotype that is we've not, just lost half of our audience it's <laughs> not attractive you know and right. the point i was trying to make is that Who's the the biggest audience of gamers out there? It's middle-aged men like us. That's right. Uh, or younger men, of course. Or boys. <laughs> A very small portion of them, by comparison, are actually female. Now, it's beginning to change these days with marketing and all of that. But uh, the vast majority of gamers are males, right? So, automatically, just based on that statistic, <laughs> you have... <laughs> you have expectation that if you're speaking to a girl or a group of people with girls in them, that they're not going to find those attributes in a person interesting or attractive simply because they don't share the same interests. And so I think that alone is the primary uh, primary reason that most people are uncomfortable talking about games in a social setting. If they're not comfortable with themselves or if they're just afraid to make a bad impression on, on a girl. So, right. so that was, so basically, well, what you're saying is, for you personally, you don't really have uh, uh, any kind of embarrassment or anything. You actually tackle the topic as something you proudly display, as something you enjoy, and you don't even even in a setting where gaming isn't necessarily a topic, you wouldn't uh, avoid it or you wouldn't even downplay it as part of your life. You proudly <laughs> display yourself as a a more than casual gamer. That, that's basically what I'm getting from you. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. I would have no problem saying in a professional environment, yes, I want to make, I yeah. want to have gaming be my profession. Gotcha. Um, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I totally agree. I, I feel, I, I feel that we are on the exact same level there. Um, I, well, Rudy, I, tell us you. Yeah, tell us what you. I mean, in, in, in the same kind of setting, somebody that you know, a big group of people. Maybe you don't even know these people. You're trying to make an impression, whether it's professional or personal. How do you well, approach it? The way I look at it, I literally, I, and, and and I'm sure you guys are as well. I mean, with being a hardcore gamer, there is a high level of passion behind what we do. You know, I mean, you've grown up with it, and chances are, it's very nostalgic to you. And anything that I, I mean, that, that's nostalgic to me, anything that I that I take a great pride in, I don't give a shit what other people think. I'm going to tell them what I, what I enjoy to do. The thing is, is that the only place in, in my actual life that I would, that I would even feel out of place saying I'm a gamer would be with my, <laughs> my wife's family, uh, my in-laws. And, you know, in all reality, when you sit back and listen to people who hunt and, you know, they talk about their roof all day. Oh, I paid, uh, I paid $3,000 for that roof. Oh, you got central heat in there? That's boring <laughs> shit. And if I could... 
if I can if I can come into a, a and just go, God, I'm glad I'm not that. You know, I'm glad I'm not that boring. And I'll tell you what, it was so funny. One Christmas, we get up there, we get up to my my par- or my wife's parents' uh, family. You know, they're they're all gathered, and they've got they they bought a Wii system. I mean, they're just like going crazy. They're like, oh, yeah, we can actually. Oh, we're bowling in the living room now, you know. And I'm like, oh my god, they think that. I mean, it's just like, okay, why is it okay for you guys to do this now? That it requires just a little bit of physical activity, but in any other setting, I'm a complete outcast because I play, you know, Call of Duty or something like that. Um, no, but to answer your question, I totally no. I if if I'm meeting, you know, when I when I was dating, um, you know, that was the first thing I brought up. If I went over to your house, I was like, "So, do you have any problem with me bringing my PS2 with me uh, when we <laughs> have PS2 will travel?" My God, I got, this, I got this smaller PS2 so I could in my pocket, my cargo pants, just in case I had a TV and I was staying the night. And you know, if if a girl was turned off by the the fact that I was a gamer, I don't want to be with her anyway. It's you know like what? it's like, hang on, Julie. Let me introduce you to your competitor. This is the PS2. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> now, if you two can get along, then all three of us can get along. But listen, if you two can't get along, one of you has got to go, and the one without a controller is going to be the loser. <laughs> exactly. That is. That's what I put it. <laughs> But you know, my wife, you know, she was, she, she get, here's what happened actually. She acted like she was okay with it. And you know, that was a bad thing for her to do because, you know, as soon as this, you know, why, why are you playing that game? What do you mean, why am I playing the game? I thought we had this discussion when we were dating, you know, and she's like, oh, God, we did, you know, and this is one of those things where I had to literally pull her into the gaming world a little bit. And, uh, you know, it, it, it worked out in the end. But, you know, it, it's one of those things at school, I was always either, you know, very, I, I was really good with the gaming crowd, and I was really good with the other crowd. You know, that wasn't into gaming, and I tried to pull the the gaming over to the other crowd. And but you know, by the time I was in high school, gaming was getting to the point where if you didn't play games after the football, uh, you know, after the football game on Friday night, if you didn't go and play Halo at a LAN party, you were kind of the outcast anyway. Um, you know, these things became pretty popular where I was at. Um, so no, I, I have absolutely no problem. I even put, you know, I put, uh, my YouTube career on my, my job applications. I have no problem saying anything about that. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so okay. So you and Will are on the same page mm-hmm. then for sure. You guys are both extremely proud to wear the badge of hardcore gamer. No, oh, no problem at all. Of course. Well, Rui, tell us, uh, tell us your take on it in, in the flat land of Portugal. <laughs> I'm a, and trust me in Portugal it's even more of an outcast situation than where you guys are because basically technology goes slower around here and by slower we can start by my internet connection which is a whole lot slower than whatever you guys got over there but apart from that there's also a whole lot of almost backwards mentality like when people um speak to me and I'm like, uh, oh yeah, I'm going to be um, playing some games and I'm making videos for YouTube. And they're like, what do you mean you're making videos for YouTube? And I'm like, yeah. yeah, that's actually what I'm doing right now as a profession because I've been working, I have some savings and I'm going to invest in a career where I'm going to be basically working, making videos and playing games all the time. Because you play games to do research and to be good at a game so that you can then make videos about that game. I'm, and still, I, I'm I, still dumbfounded that you got Skype to work on an Atari 2600. I mean, how did you even get that to work? <laughs> oh, no, I, I went to America and imported one of those things you guys call a computer. Oh, freaking awesome. That is amazing. Did it fit in the canoe on the way back to Portugal? I mean, that's unbelievable. <laughs> What do you mean, canoe? They, they strapped it onto a life raft and pushed it down the ocean. It eventually went downstream until it got close enough for me to swim out and pick it up. <laughs> amazing. That is amazing. But um, what, what I was saying is basically, yeah, I, I tell that proudly. I tell that to people. I want to do something that I really like. I mean, a lot of people, in por- specifically in Portugal, are just basically, um, what's the expression? I think it's conformed. Conformed? Ah. Content? Ah, yeah. Content. Content. To just do whatever destiny throws their way. It's like, oh, I got a job uh, flipping burgers. I guess I'm good at flipping burgers. And they just keep on doing it forever. Wow. Forever. They're content 
with whatever they get thrown to as a job. And then they'll basically spend the rest of their lives whining about, oh man, all the plans I had when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I want to be a doctor. When I was a kid, I want to do this. When I was a kid, I was going to be an engineer. And it's, they have all these dreams, but like they're just content by doing that, getting home, banging their wife, and pretty much it. That's all, that's all that like 80% of Portugal does. They did it all like, for the Nikki. <laughs> Basically, like you, you said earlier, in a party situation, if I'm asked, oh, what are you going to do this weekend? I'm say, I'm going to kill Zeus. What about you? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kill Zeus, or I'm going to raid the boss in World of Warcraft. Now I would say the boss name. I'm going to kill Arthas. What about you? I was hanging. <laughs> and people was, I, I've actually had this happen a lot of times. And people were like, what, what do you mean? You're going you're gonna to kill someone? What, what's going on? <laughs> please, like, no, please. I'm, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna play a game, and it's like people are like, "Oh, you're gonna play a game," and it's like, and sometimes here's here's where it comes really down to how hardcore you really are. It's which is sometimes people will show up unexpectedly at your house, right? And, and when you're in a situation like you're in a World World of Warcraft gaming situation, right? You have a raid. Oh, hang on, hang on, my doorbell's going off. Hang on, somebody just showed. Oh, never mind. Go on, Ruth. I'm not gonna answer it. <laughs> What I was saying is that you get in a situation where you have 24 other people dependent upon you. That's because true, basically yeah. Because five people to do a raid. And you're playing a game and someone get, comes over to your house for whatever reason. They come over to your house and they expect you to just ditch everything you're doing to go... Yeah, um, they want to be entertained. You have to entertain yeah. your, your guest. And here you are. You're committed to a raid for five hours. <laughs> Eight hours. <laughs> for me, basically, it was always, well, tough luck. You came in a bad time. <laughs> yeah, the fridge is over there. The remote for the TV is over there. Good luck. <laughs> exactly. If you want to stick around, sure, whatever. You're welcome to stick around. Pull up a chair. You can watch me do this thing. Whatever. Just stay quiet. Don't make too much noise. Because <laughs> this in other words, right? you're not welcome here. Leave. <laughs> I would never say you're not I'm here. You're always welcome to my house. Whatever, <laughs> visit, whatever, come hang out. This was when I was playing World of Warcraft. And, and people would be like, it's just a game. Why can't you just press pause? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead and press pause on the 24 other human beings that are dependent <laughs> upon me being here to do this thing. And they're like, what do you mean, other human? I mean, well, there's basically 24 very real people. I want to hear 24 it's people say, Rui likes to push my buttons. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what, what I'm saying is that a lot of people don't understand the type of commitment you have to make and they just think it's just a video game and then the example I would usually use is like okay so let me get this straight you, let's say you organize a soccer match I tell this to these people let's say you organize a soccer match soccer is a popular sport in Portugal I know that you guys probably couldn't care less about it wait, but wait do you mean soccer soccer or football Football. <laughs> football. Okay. <laughs> awesome. It's obviously soccer. Anyways, uh, people will be, uh, and, and then they'll say, yeah, if I organize a soccer match, obviously I have to go. I mean, there's people relying on me. Well, this is the same thing. It, just because they're not next to me and they're in another country or whatever doesn't mean there's, they're not real people. Do they ever a bring up the point that a soccer match doesn't last eight hours? <laughs> Neither does neither does a raid if you're if you have uh, if you have a decent mind. There's a couple oh, okay. of people who don't and take it way too seriously. <laughs> like most I've raided uh, was probably like for four hours, never more than that. But still, a soccer match doesn't last four hours either. Regardless, basically, I'm completely okay with. Uh, Saying I'm a gamer, I tr I'm trying to do this for a living. It's I'm totally okay with that. I never try to hide that situ that thing in any situation. I never hide it. Never. Right. I don't ever hide. The thing th that it boils down to is that sometimes you're just with a complete crowd, where it doesn't even matter if you're a gamer or not. The the subject is never even going to come up for discussion. Yeah. You know what I mean. It's 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 not even appropriate to just speak about games because there's no one else in there that's going to be interesting and in, interested in speaking about games with you. Right. No, I agree. Yeah, you get into these situations like, like exactly like with my in-laws. You know, I go up there and and they're all realtors and and stuff like that. And they there is no there's no bringing it up. You know, even in the situation, but it, it does lend to me not having anything to say to them. You know, I I don't want to talk about their roof. I don't care how much it costs, and 
you know, yeah, it can definitely it can definitely hurt me in the social area sometimes. But you know, I it comes down to me not being uh, not being worried about it, and I think, and obviously you you two as well. However, I'm I'm curious to hear Anakin's such a sellout. I'm curious to hear what he has I to say. I think we're running out of time. I think we're just at the end of the podcast. <laughs> oh, here it comes. My wife, uh, my wife doesn't even know I game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually give her a bottle of Benadryl every night, and that's when I get on the computer. And when she wakes up in the morning, I just go, "Oh, honey, I just, you know, I think you fell asleep. I, I was just watching a movie." Um, <laughs> anyway, no, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I obviously am uh, in quite a bit older than most of the people on YouTube and, and people who are really into gaming. Although um, current statistics, uh, supposedly, it's it's hard for me to experience this, but current statistics prove me wrong. They actually said in the latest statistics from 2009. This does not even include 2010 or this year, but for 2009, the average age of gaming. Now remember, this is gamers across the board. This could be anything from a Zynga game on Facebook all the way down to they played Atari one time, okay? Uh, this I'm sorry, is, that's not gaming. I, I agree, okay, and, I, and they did not define, you know, gaming as you play a certain kind of game or how many hours a week you play or anything like that. But supposedly, the average age of gamers is 37. Now, that's my age, okay, so <laughs> I am supposedly right in the middle, but I'll tell you what, I know far less people my age or older than I do uh, people way beneath me playing video games, so I don't know how, how much I trust those statistics. But here's the deal. Obviously, I, I'm quite a bit older. I come from a back Background where the first gaming, uh, the first game, video game. Now remember, gaming. We, we do need to define this as video gaming. Okay, the thing is, is the first video game I ever played was really one of the first video games ever released on the on the mass consumer audience, which was the Atari 2600. Came out in 1978. I was four years old. My uh, parents got one at the time. They thought it was neat. You had a joystick and one button. And You're you know old. what? I know. So, you know, the thing is, at the time, you know, video games were kind of a, kind of a novelty. A lot of people, you know, especially at that time, I remember this. You know, at the time, people were, oh, well, that's cute. Oh, look, you can play, a, you, you can like do something on your TV besides watch TV. That's silly. Okay, turn that off. Let's watch TV now. So the idea back <laughs> then is it was it really was kind of a. Um, you know, a, a stigma that went with it is like, oh, you got one of those video video game things? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that's cute. But anyway, this went on, okay? And obviously, ma you know, the mass consumer audience really didn't adopt this until the original Nintendo. And even then, I would go as far as saying the SNES is whenever the, the you know, it became truly popular. Um, the funny thing is, is I didn't really adopt the Nintendo that much. It was around that time that I started playing around with PCs a lot more. Uh, I, I got an Amiga, and uh, again, the Amiga 500 was very heavy on games. And, you know, you could do a lot of other cool stuff. And I'd, so I kind of went the, the PC path. But, you know, even Midnight then... Midnight Resistance. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You'll like that? Indeed. How's that for a reference oh, right there? Jesus. Midnight Resistance. Obscure. What an awesome game. <laughs> oh, so obscure. Really. Everybody right now is, like, scratching their head. <laughs> but anyway, you know, the thing is, is I, um, I, I really got into gaming. I was pretty hardcore. Most of my very, very close friends were really uh, into games like me. But once again... I, I actually considered a lot of them geeky and, and nerdy and, you know, whatever you want to call it. I actually was, I always kind of skirted the fence. I was not really, of course this is arguable, but I was not really geeky or nerdy like a lot of the people I hung out with. I was a lot more uh, socially acceptable. I was very outspoken. I, I was involved in other things besides video games. They didn't rule my life, in other words. You know, I, I didn't live video games. Now, that changed whenever I got my first hardcore PC. This was like, you know, I got like a, a Pentium 60 uh, that I bought, you know, myself. And by then, you know, before then I'd jacked around with horrible computer parts and tried to make stuff work. I, I, it, nothing was very good. So the first, first time I really was introduced to gaming in my own environment, in my own apartment, I was living on my own. I had all my, you know, all of this technology at my hands because I was able to finally afford it. That's when I started doing it, and I really did become like this closet, like hardcore gamer where I was doing <laughs> this all the time. But I had friends of all spectrum, you know, of all the, the whole, of, across the board. I had people who just like to drink and hang out on the weekends. I had other people who were hardcore gamers. I had people that were LAN gamers. You know, we'd all get our PCs together and stuff like that. So I, I adapted 
to the environment at hand. And if gaming was not a socially acceptable topic, I basically avoided it. You know, if somebody was like, hey, what'd you do last night? If I stayed up playing Dark Forces on my computer until, you know, two in the morning, I didn't say that. I was just like, ah, yeah, just kind of, I don't know, fooled around the house last night. I don't know what I did. And I left so it alone. So is actually correct. You are a sellout. <laughs> <laughs> I know him very well. <laughs> well, it's true. You know, I, 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 have, oh uh, I have had to adapt to certain situations along the way because, remember, this was ingrained in me uh, at, a, at a much younger age that video games are not acceptable. You guys are, are you know, quite a bit. I mean, Rui, you not not so much, but, you know, you other guys are quite a bit younger than me, and that's a, there's a, there was certainly a difference in perception, and so I had to adapt to that perception to not be you know, flagged uh, as a, a video game nerd or a video game geek who wasted my life away and, and uh, you know, met the stereotype of all, you know, all this garbage where I didn't know how to dress and I had big Coke bottle glasses and all that other stuff. You know, well, I... Uh, <laughs> and let, let me just tell you something. You have to realize something that when you're speaking, the further you go back in time, the fir and for Portugal, that's like exponential. So, like, if you go back in time to the American 60s, for Portugal, that's like the Dark Ages. Um, so, wait, so dinosaurs just just left Portugal in, like, the 80s, right? Is that is that correct? <laughs> yeah, something like that. But um, basically what I'm saying is that... Um, for you, you're still experiencing what me, I was, was experiencing 20 years ago, is what you're saying. It was even worse than you, and I still stuck with it. You I still was proudly like, displayed I... it. <laughs> God damn right. And people were like, that guy's weird. Like, people would look at me like, that guy's weird. I, re I remember when I got to um, um, what, is, what you guys consider, I think, high school, uh, I had to change schools at the very last year. So I, had to, I met a whole bunch of new group of people. And a lot of these people weren't even aware of what it was like to pirate a game or anything. You know, when you're a kid, you're always doing stupid shit like that. Yeah, you can't afford so, anything, yeah. So basically, all these guys, what they were playing, the guys that were at my school, anyone that had like a computer or had any ideas of um, playing video games or anything like that, what they did was they were actually playing demos, like shareware, shareware. demos that you got out of friggin' <laughs> magazines. And I'd be like, I, I was almost like a Coke dealer. I was like, okay, dude, here, here you go, here you go. 18, 18 discs, you know, those, those old discs that Absolutely. I think three point. 3.5s, yep. yeah, 3.5s, and I was like, okay, here you go, 18 discs, and here you go, this is Destruction Derby, dude, the full thing, you go ahead, you just <laughs> do it like this. People didn't even knew uh, how, how to get the programs, because you have to remember something, at this point in time, I didn't even have proper internet. Like, you didn't even have permanent internet in Portugal, so it's like it's not like, oh, I need this thing, I'm just going to go on online and download it. No, 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 no. You'd have to go speak to someone else who knew the cousin of someone else who was a complete nerd and geek and had all the programs and all the stuff and all these discs, and if you had to pray that the disc was still working. See, it's like, I, I that was disc, that guy. That I know exactly what you're saying. Good? Oh, so you were that guy. I okay. really was. And, and that's the thing is, you know, it was weird because I did feel at times like I led a double life. You know, there was people who didn't even, literally, that knew me that didn't even know I played video games or owned a computer. But then there were other people <laughs> who, yeah. you know, I shared the love of games with and they knew everything. And I had unbelievable amounts of stuff. You know, I mean, I was young. I didn't have any money. I wanted to play these games. I wanted to be able to experience some of the things that other people were talking about who had plenty of money. So yeah, I, I turned to, you know, getting stuff off the internet and, and copying other people's discs and all that at the time. I was like, oh, I got to play this, but I don't have $50 for a new PC game. That's ridiculous. So, you know, I, 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 want, I, I basically archived this stuff. I kept it. And so other people I knew, I would be talking about, oh man, I played this new game last night. And they're like, Holy cow, how did you go afford that? You know, you, you make like $3 an hour. <laughs> and I'd be like, uh, yeah, about that. Uh, I didn't, uh, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of times I would actually go out whenever I, I got older and I was able to start making a little bit of money on the side. Believe it or not, I, I actually went back and bought games uh, because I felt guilty about it. I went and bought games that I really enjoyed that I got a lot of hours out of. But, you know, the thing is, is that now... Now that I'm older, you know, I, I've, I've got a wife, I'm married with kids, the house, the cars, you know, the job, the 40-hour work week, the whole nine yards. But the funny thing is now, everybody knows. I don't, I don't hide it from anybody. Everybody knows I run a YouTube channel. Everybody, I mean, I, I put my YouTube channel, uh, all my videos, I link every single one of them on my Facebook page, which I even have 
clients, you know, clients that I, I, I fix computers on the side in the evening, I don't care. You know, they want to, you know, I, I actually promote it now because I think the, the stigma for the most part, you know, even for an adult like myself, you know, they suppose, oh, well, you have to be responsible now because you're 37 and you have kids. No, I want my kids to play video games with me. Exactly. What are you talking about? You exactly. Know? So, you know, I, I actually think that I will probably end up being, you know, uh, among my children's friends, I will be the cool dad who has like, <laughs> you know, Rock Band 16 set up in the living room and I'll have, you know, Connect 3, you know, where the kids are dancing around doing Call of Duty in the living room all together. You know, this is, I, I'm really hoping that, you know, what, what I am able to give to my kids, and, and even, you know, it's funny too, because even some of my adult friends, you know, family members and other things, one of the people, by the way, that I got into video games, and I'm so proud of this, okay, my father lives about 30 minutes from me, and uh, him and my mom, they used to just sit in front of a TV. My father is, is uh, he's going to be 70 years old in January. 70 years old, okay? My mom's only a couple of years behind him. I have actually gotten them now to the point, I got my dad an Xbox 360 a couple of years ago. He is now spending his evening, 70 years old, he's got arthritis in his hands and everything. He can hardly hold the controller. He plays Call of Duty five to six hours a night. <laughs> and my, and this is and what he's doing he's playing Call of Duty on an Xbox in his recliner and he's got bifocal, so he moves his glasses down so he can see. He's got a 65-inch TV with full surround sound. I helped him set all this up, and he is completely and utterly immersed in Call of Duty for four or five hours a night. The funnier part is my mom leaves the room, goes back to her office area, and she sits and plays casual games from PopCap and Big Fish all night. <laughs> and, you know, the thing is, is I'm so happy about this because, you know, the funny thing is, is people who used to dismiss games, like, like some of the people we've described in, in these social settings, you know, the people who used to dismiss games, if only they were actually introduced to them and they overcome the stigma themselves, they would actually realize why there's this massive industry geared towards people like us who enjoy it because it's, there's nothing else like it. I right. can't hardly sit in front of a television and watch a, a show anymore because it's like, I just feel like I'm doing something non-interactive. I need to be able to do something, you know? It's I, like it's yeah. boring. I want to rip someone's head off. Why am I just <laughs> watching this guy speak as if, as if he knows me? Like, hey, no, for this show, we're going to do this and this and that. And then you're like, how about you rip someone's head off? No? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not too boring. Ultra you need to play Gears of War, Rui. Cut <laughs> this one is, in half. This is like the most you. violent episode of Down the Scope I, I think we've ever had. Rui has made this <laughs> the most violent episode for sure. Chainsawing yeah, people I, with I, money falling out of them. It's crazy. I tend to bring out the best in everyone. <laughs> is that the best? Okay. <laughs> So anyway, yes, apparently I, among us four, I'm the sellout because, you know, and it is something uh, I, I, you know, I used to do. I don't do it anymore. I'm very, very proud of it now. But I'll tell you, I think people my age and a little older probably still have a little bit of that, that uh, idea that they, they don't want to be labeled a certain way or they don't want to have a stigma applied to them about it. They don't want to come it. out of the closet. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it not, yeah. Anyway. Closet gamers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I, I understand. And that's why I, I had that disclaimer, you know, it's, it, it's not the same today. You know, back in the day, it was kind of a taboo thing. And, and uh, today it's so widely accepted. Oh, that, it's mainstream. You yeah, know, you shouldn't you should never feel upset or or worry about it because it, it's almost like you know you're you're the uncool one if you don't have a console it's true um, yeah. so yeah i i totally understand and it's, it's it's mainly a joke i mean it, i i understand that that feeling and it had to have been harder back in the 50s where you were <laughs> going to school and <laughs> yes whenever i pedaled my car with my feet to get to school you know <laughs> if you think about it though i mean i Gaming gets a lot of bad raps. It gets a bad reputation from a lot of people, and especially in the professional world. Education being the biggest one, I would have to say. Um, but is it really a bad thing? Or is it just a new here's, industry? Here's now, the let me thing. just say, hold on now. Let me say something. Video game development is absolutely an art form. And not just a regular art form. You look at the traditional arts, you know, painting, music, uh, cinematography, all these different things. What does video games have in common with all those things? Everything. Mm. It incorporates 
all different types of art. It represents the refinement of man's creations in art forms of all different categories. How can that be? You're creating a virtual world, something outside of planet Earth. And that's frightening to the older people for obvious reasons. But honestly, <laughs> it, is, it is the finest achievement in, in my opinion. This is my opinion. But it is absolutely the best art form there is. It's, it's true. Because it involves everything. Right. It's true. A human experience in that, in that world that we create. And we've, we've, we've had this. So it's nothing to be ashamed of. No, nothing we, at all. We've actually even, you know, we've brought the, we've had this topic before. We were talking about gaming as an art form. And, and yeah, we, you know, we, we said the exact same thing you did there. You know, it's, it's brings everything together. It's definitely an art form. That was actually an early episode for us. Where yeah, it the was. question was, where, you know, is uh, our games art? That's what it mm-hmm. boiled down to. And, and we had to define art. We defined games and we defined the idea of uh, how the game is made. You know, and we even talked talked about games versus movies, you know, because right. some people still claim, oh, well, movie is so much more expensive to develop, it's so much harder to create. Well, think about this. You're only creating two hours on, in average, uh, on average, you're only creating two hours of content, and it's two hours of non-linear content. A mm-hmm. game world, something like World of Warcraft, people are spending countless, I mean, we're, you don't even measure it in hours anymore. You measure it in days. Some people measure it in months. And, you know, you're in Azeroth for just unbelievable amounts of time. What does it take to create something that somebody spends that much of their existence inside of? You know, mm-hmm. it, this is obviously an art form. It's something that people, you know, are so interested in and so enthralled with that they, they can spend literally months of their waking life involved in. So obviously this has got to surpass almost any other medium that we've ever created. Yeah, you made right. the movie comparison. Which does it take more artistic ability to set up an artsy shot in a movie, or does it take more artistic ability to actually construct the character's face and body and expressions and the right. environment that surrounds that person? And exactly. The answer is obvious. I totally yeah exactly you're right, and uh, and I you know we 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 discussed that it, it definitely takes a lot more in. Rui's, and, you know, Rui's asking right now what are movies by the way Portugal hasn't got. <laughs> <to see it. laughs> No, I was I was actually going to say that um, Hengist pulled out an important point there, which is that games are really viewed poorly by the educational system. They're like, oh, games are spoiling everyone's mind, and the video games and the violent video games are making people go out and just kill other people. And I'd just like to pitch in on that, where the fact is... Video games aren't doing this. Mentally unstable people have existed since the dawn of times. Let's be honest here. <laughs> and the real the real catalyst here is the parents. And yeah. a lot of and a lot of the parents just feel comfortable. It's like, oh yeah, my kid is like, oh, he just keeps he just keeps me occupied so much time. Sometimes I just grab I put him in front of the TV. And yeah, he watches TV for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> And then it's like, okay, so basically you let the television educate your children, and then you say that video games are bad. Because here's the thing, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of the kids today have been educated in front of the television, and um, basically I'm just saying it's all about the parents. Like, my parents didn't let me play video games for too many hours. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just it. It's like, I've seen so many videos about, oh, my, my child is addicted to World of Warcraft. I can't make him stop. And I'm always thinking, wait a second. So your, your son is addicted to World of Warcraft and you can't make him stop. Okay, I have a suggestion. Don't pay him an allowance. <laughs> whip his ass. <laughs> no, or whip his ass. That works too. But I'm just saying that the easiest way to go about it, don't give him any money. If he doesn't have any money, he can't play World of Warcraft. It's the end of that. True. Exactly. Cancel your credit card. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's, it's pointless. It's just that these parents are like, oh, my child, my child's addicted to video games. Well, maybe you should just tell him, don't play video games or I'll beat the living snot out of you. How about that? <laughs> Oh, brother. Awesome. Yeah. No, it's to me, it's all about the parents because they say, oh, I, I Ameri- agree. I've heard a lot of times America's youth is so violent. No, they're not. 
no, yeah. Well, again, again, we we have discussed this before. We uh, when we talked about the uh, the bill that was passed in, in California, we talked about this as well. And uh, you know, we we totally agree with you. It's it's all the parents, man. And yeah. And you know, the the thing is, is that the same thing happened with with cinema back in the day. You know, they they showed the first tit shot, and boom, people like flipped out. You know, they're like, oh my god. And then they show the first the first violence scene or something like that. You know, eventually these. Uh, I mean, it pretty much has come to pass. These these parents against gaming idiots, they're not gonna they're not going anywhere. This the gaming is is way too far. It, it'll take a generation. Seriously, it'll take the uh-huh. people who are in their forties and fifties now, literally another uh, twenty years before we get past that generation being completely uh, absent in the media for video yep. games to truly take their place in yeah, things these like people Fox need to News, just you know? die. <laughs> Exactly. You know, Fox just News is, is the away. worst. You know, they, they, every time something bad in the news comes up, literally, it's because of video games. For, <laughs> over at Fox News, it's terrible. Yeah, I don't think our generation started World War II. Did you guys? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Hitler played Sim City 4 or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, this is perfect. I'm going to create the perfect city. <laughs> I That's what I, I made. Want the with me. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> the thing it, it, it kind of um, boils down to is, um, have, have you guys even heard about that thing that happened in Norway? Oh, of course, yeah. It was huge worldwide guy, news. And they the tried to blame that, it on Call of Duty. Yeah, they were like, oh, he was practicing this in video games. And I'm like, <laughs> come again and explain to me because I, my head does not comprehend this. How does someone picking up a controller and playing a video game where they press buttons and they shoot people in the face, this automatically classifies them to use rifles in real life. You know, so I'm it's not... like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in the Marines. I'm practicing right now in Call of Duty. You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about Rui's <laughs> gameplay style, but apparently his, his whole perception of Call of Duty is you only shoot people in the face. Have you noticed that for any... <laughs> I, I mean, the face is a good spot to shoot someone. In. I mean, <laughs> you shoot someone in the leg. You shoot someone in the leg, it's not as bad. You shoot someone across the face, it's amazing. <laughs> and it's always across the face. You literally, you literally just proved that video games can teach you how to kill somebody better. <laughs> My God. Okay, Fox News is going to pick up this podcast, and we're all going to be demonized in the media. I just want you to know that. Let me just say something. You guys have, have you, I know that William hasn't played it yet. Have you guys played through God of War 3 and finished it? Yes. I have not finished it. Yes, I have. I've played it. You remember the Hercules scene? Yes. <laughs> I know the Hercules scene. I know, I showed it to you. I That's s- why I mentioned the face so much, because basically he <laughs> smashes Hercules' face inside out. Dude, and I, I was, just, so I, amazing. I, I was swimming. I was, okay, I was trying to swim up under him because I wanted to see what he had done. Because, you know, I didn't show what he had done. Like, he's just sitting there just bashing his head in. And then, like, the next scene, he's, like, floating face down in the water. I spent, like, an hour trying to look up at his face to see what had happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that uh, I'm I'm, go- I'm gonna say this, and I know you're gonna feel real bad. But it, when you get near the corpse, you can actually press a button, and they show you. You gotta be shitting me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's R1 or L1. I don't know which one. It was whatever the button is you use to interact with the chest. You get up to the corpse, you press that button, and they switch the camera angle to his face. No, That's what the no. eighth wonder of the world is. I am playing. I am playing again right now. I I just swam down just so I could try and look up. I never thought of going over and pressing a button on him so it'd show me. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Jesus. All right. Anyway, anyway, guys, I think we are. We're pretty close to out of time, aren't we, Anakin? Oh uh, yeah, we were out of time about an hour ago. So. <laughs> No, we, well, we, this is actually, a, I think it will actually be our longest uh, podcast. We're, we're pushing an hour and 56 minutes. Too All much right, man, guys. too much man in here. I think yeah, we know that's, why. Little too that's, much basically, power. that's basically right. me. I'm breaking limits in everything I do. <laughs> oh, I'm just that amazing. Unbelievable. <laughs> for a second. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. I want to thank, uh, thank you, Rui. I want to thank you, Hangaist, uh, for coming <laughs> on this podcast. Coming on the podcast from the south, <laughs> and uh, and providing some awesome commentary and some some awesome points. I want to thank you guys for that, and hopefully we'll see you in the future. 
Um, don't forget to go to, uh, to email us your, your uh, topics and questions at podcastdownthescope at gmail.com. And uh, don't forget to comment on uh, what you thought of Deus Ex and what you think of the upcoming games coming out like Gears of War 3 and, and, and Dark Souls. Hell yeah. Don't forget and, to tell us what kind of gamer you are. Are you embarrassed like me? Uh, or, <laughs> or do you probably are you, display? Are the- you complete and utter sellout like Anakin? <laughs> <laughs> or are you a brave trooper like the rest of us? Indeed. Because <laughs> I would definitely like to know. And, uh, and guys, I want to I thank you for listening and watching. Uh, tune in next week for episode 35 where we will have Cliffy B on the podcast. And we'll also be talking with Fox News about violence in video games. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> take, it e- take it easy, guys. And we will see you next week. All right. Thanks a All lot. Right. See you guys. Thanks for having me. Peace. Absolutely.